Sirina Annasek. Welcome everyone to the Gray versus Muir College fixture. This fixture stretches back about 128 years since we first played, so it's lovely to host um, Gray again for the first time in a, a couple of years. Um, first match of the day is on the 14 A's. Um, weather for so far seems fair, no wind, no rain, but they're predicting some rain for later in the day. Let's hope it stays away so we can actually see some nice quality rugby. Just if we run through the teams, um, the grey on the 14 front row, Kilian, Holm and Owen. And then the lock pairing of Mildenhall and Dorfling. Then the loose trio is Klaas, Ruwankwa and Kodinka. And then Derbyshire is the uh, scrum off, Little the fly, uh, fly off. Um, the two wings, Shambar and Miller. And then Cook playing outside centre. And he's following in his father's footsteps, Ronnie Cook. And then the inside centre is Minyapa, and is also the vice captain. The eighth man, Singaloni, is the captain of Gray. And the fullback is Zondila. And then if we go to the Mir side, Umyakana, Moss, and Pelisho is the front row, Kutan, and Ngashe is the locks. Then the loose trio is Dow, Smith, and Msikataya. And then Pillay and Mtabese is the 
scrum off and fly off. Two wings is Solomon and Kwaba. Flotman fullback and Dubi and Mone are the centers. Great kicking off, received by Mia College. Good clean out by Mia. Ball going nicely through the hands. Muir playing a bit in the danger zone here at the moment and getting tackled back nicely by Gray. Muir should get rid of this ball. Try and play in Gray's half. Take another carry. And it seems like it's a turnover by Gray. This is dangerous. Gray's got some space out wide here if they play the ball quickly. Decided to rather take the ball up. Still space on the right hand side of the field. Muir College players not folding. Also decided to take it up again. Lots of gaps there in the midfield. A good ball went backwards. Gray's still on the attack. Great run there by the inside center. And a penalty to Gray. Mia College not releasing. Gray taking a quick tap, trying to speed up the game. And the first try of the day. Unfortunately, the players do not have numbers on their jersey, so it's difficult to identify um, the player. But as the day goes along, I'm sure it will get a little bit easier. But it seems like the first try is scored by class number six. Okay, fine. Mia College is playing a little bit too much in their own 22 and not exiting well. Gray with a good turnover and they punish Mia early in the game. Kick just missed to the left. It seems like the scrum off is taking charge of the kicking duty. So two minutes into the match, the score is 5-0 for Gray. Let's see if Mia can hit back. I think it's very important for Mia to apply pressure early on in the match and not let this match go away from them. Gray are the obvious favourites. Deep kick, kick off by Mia College. Nicely fielded by Gray. Good defence. Gray cleaning out the ruck nicely. Deciding to run the ball. Solid tackle by Mia. Good clean out by Gray. Ball still available for Gray. Ah, oh, good solid tackle there by Mia College, pushing Gray backwards a bit. Finally, Gray deciding to kick the ball, but the ball nicely fielded by by the fly off. Matabese decided to take them on, but got tackled backwards. Quick ball for Mia, a little bit of space out wide. 
Mooney taking up the ball nicely there from outside centre, getting a little bit of forward momentum. Then Mbengashi also taking up the ball, a little bit close to the ruck. Mune needs to spread the ball a little bit wider. Gray got a clear size um, benefit here. So Mune must maybe spread the ball a bit more, not take it up so much. Oh, Pillay taking a little snipe there. Lovely snipe by Pillay. Unfortunately losing the ball in the tackle and it's advantage for okay, referee blowing the whistle quickly. Knock on by Pillay. Nice little play there. Keeping the pillar one and pillar two honest there. Close to the ruck. Scrum down for Gray. First scrum of the day. Going to be interesting to see with Gray having a clear size advantage if Mia is going to be able to be solid in the scrum. Maybe see if they can put a little bit of pressure on the Gray scrum here to make the exit a bit harder. It's a very solid scrum for Gray. Advantage for Gray. So first off in the day, it seems like Gray's got a clear advantage in the scrums. Big handoff there by the ball carrier from Gray. Unfortunately, a little knock on, but I think they're going to come back for advantage. I know the ref has already played advantage. I think Gray a little bit unlucky there. The advantage, a penalty advantage in the scrum there. But very good defense from Mia not giving up and making their tackles. Both teams like playing in their 22. They're not really too eager to exit and both teams have been um, punished for that. Um, Mia on the attack now, but with this much better scrum from Mia, balls out, Pillay to Matabesi, unfortunate knock there, an advantage to Gray, double little knock on, so they will go down for the scrum, first infringement made by Mia, and this is actually a nice platform for Gray to attack from. Um, I don't think they're going to kick based on what I've seen so far. Um, but a nice little uh, right shoulder here. And they've got space on the right to attack. Mia decided to put two players back for the kick. Gray attacking well, getting the ball through the hands. Have a little bit of space on the outside. It seems like the outside center there. Cook has made a little bit of a few meters. Um, referee blowing the whistle, coming back for advantage. Um, no arms, hitting, tackling the man with the shoulder. And Gray's got a lovely penalty just outside their half. And kicking the ball out just inside the 10 meters of Muir College. Um, it will be interesting to see if Gray's going to maul this ball. Based on what I've seen the last two years, Gray's got extremely strong more. Early on in the match, it seems like they're going for a four-man, oh, sorry, a five-man line-out. Get the ball in, and Gray deciding to go for the mall. Very good start to the mall, nice momentum. And then Mia College had brought down the mall, so that's advantage, Gray. I think Gray is going to be doing much of the same. The inside center there, and Vice Captain Yapa taking up the ball nicely. Quick ball needed here. New advantage, I think, for Gray offside there by Mia. Nice tackle, though, by Mbengashe. But the referee calling them back for the penalty. I think Gray will do much of the same, just kick the ball out and maul again. Uh, Mia is clearly going to have to put a little bit more pressure on that line-out um, and on the mall. Or they should stop giving away penalties because Gray is just going to kick the ball out and maul if, if they make it that easy for Gray. Let's see if Gray is going to apply a little bit more of the same tactics. Hooker Horn and the vice-captain has been successful with his first throw. Great. Seems like opting for a full line out this time. Ball got into the locks and they are setting up for the mall again. The mere player is not really committing to the mall, unfortunately, making it easy for Gray. And it seems like that's going to be try number two. 
ball held up. And it seems like finally Gray has scored the try. Mir College, unfortunately a little bit late there, but applying some decent pressure close to the line, um, preventing Gray from easily getting over, but Gray eventually getting over the line and scoring the second try of the match. Um, Mir is going to have to commit more players to the mall. Players are standing around a little bit. As that mall comes down, they're going to have to hit that, that mall to try and push Gray back a bit. But uh, very good forward play by Gray early on in the match. You can clearly see the impact that Robbie Kempson has had um, on, on the school uh, um, director of rugby there and great Springbok tight did. Their mauling um, and lineups have been excellent over the last two, three years. So, um, and then it seems like it's been, it's good throughout all the age groups. Okay, so the score 10 0, um, 10 minutes into the first half. Mere co College taking along behind the poles here. Um, referee getting a bit impatient with them. Let's see if Matabese will go deep again. I think that is the way to play it, is to kick deep and apply pressure. Try and trap Gray in the 22. Giving as few penalties away as possible. You know, another deep kickoff, unfortunately, in the middle of the field. Maybe a good attacking option for, for Gray. Decent tackle there by Mir. Good clean out by Gray. Balls available. Gray taking up the ball with the forwards again. I think that is number six. Glass again that's taking up the ball nicely. Gray play, play, playing to the left, have the ball available again. Mir College folding nicely there, making good tackles. But Gray's cleaning out is excellent so far. Our oh, ball gone backwards through the hands. Mir applying a bit of pressure and they caught them at behind the advantage line. But the ball's still available for Gray. They're going out to the right. That's a knock-on. And uh, Muir has picked up the ball. And this is advantage Muir. Great attacking opportunity to play off the turnover. Muir deciding to go left. Still advantage for the knock-on. And Muir deciding to take the ball up in the forwards and got hammered back there. It seems like by, by Killy under number one. But it's a scrum down for Mir College and a ni nice attacking platform for them. They haven't had much ball in the 22 of Gray, so it'll be nice to see what they can do. Traditionally, I would think that Mir would like to play with a back line here. Yeah. Oh, better scrum from Mir, got the ball back nicely. But the best here to the inside center. Oh, I don't think that was the best option, just giving the ball away. And I think it's Cook that took up the ball there with a wide scrum. Cap. Turnover for Mir. Great work there. Quick tap by Pillay. Mir taking the ball through the hands. It seems like there's a possible turnover there from Gray. Not very coordinated from Mir there, unfortunately. They did well by getting the turnover, but just gave the ball straight back to. And a disadvantage for Gray. I think Mir was offside there from the ruck. So this is another another opportunity for Gray to kick out the ball and and maul. Good kick by Gray. Just still inside their half. Um, Let's see if Mia can apply a bit more pressure on the mall. They're standing around and watching, but they either need to send someone up to contest the throw or they need to smash that drive as it comes down. 
Bengashi going up, but uh, Gray deciding to take the ball rather to the back line. Inside centre taking up the ball, lovely there, making about 10, 15 metres. The ball is available here, Gapir being offside. The ball should just go through the hands. Still opportunity out wide. Great rugby by Gray here. Morney on the cover defence, great tackle, but uh, great keeping the ball alive and just get bundled over the dead ball line. That should actually be a 22 dropout, I think, because that uh, the boy was taken out over the dead ball line. Uh, and the rain, as we speak, the rain start coming down. Um, luckily, so far, no win, but um, rain, still, rain started coming down. Now, this is going to make the game a little bit more interesting. and. Um, I think it will benefit Gray. Okay, there the ref finally making the right decision as a player was tackled over the dead ball line. So it's a 20 to drop out for, for me. Not raining too much yet, so I think the game won't be affected as yet. Um, let's see if Mbashi can get the ball in deep again and Muir players apply nice pressure. Yeah, nice drop off there, but to the halfway line. Fielded by the Gray fullback, it seems. Taking up the ball nicely. Mia slipping off a few tackles now. The defense was decent in the first 10 minutes of the game, but just allowing Gray um, forward momentum here by slipping off a few tackles. Ball nicely going through the hands here. Yes, space on the outside. Um, and it looks like Cook is over in the corner. Oh, sorry, that is number 14. It's not Cook, um, but a great try by Gray. They're actually taking that. They had the space and they took the ball out wide and scoring a lovely try. I can see here on the sleeve now that it was number 14 um, for Gray. And that's Miller. He's been actually busy a few times taking the ball up in the midfield. Um, had a nice game so far. And number 9, Derbyshire trying to convert the kick. Score 50-0, 10 minutes left in the first half. Not quite getting the distance there. And Gray being unfortunate by missing all three of their conversions, but the score being 15 0, 10 minutes to go in the first half. So far looking comfortable for Gray. Mia playing nicely at patches, but just not applying continuous pressure. And when they apply pressure, they um, often give a penalty away, and that's something that they can't do against this Gray side. They must make them work for their points. And if you're going to give penalties away, and field advantage, this might become a long day. We are slowing the game down a bit, it seems like, taking long after tries being scored to get to the halfway line. Nine minutes left in the first half. And Matabese taking the kick off again I'm sure he'll go deep again the ball being a bit slippery now kick off again into the 22 of Gray Gray taking up the ball nicely good tackle by Mia but Gray recycling that ball nicely scrum off deciding to take a nice box kick and it doesn't seem like anyone is fielding that ball from Gray uh, from Mia and Gray getting the ball back it seems like the 11 wing Shambara picking up the ball nicely there and Gray having space here on the left hand side. Good tackle by by Mia. Ball still available and still space available on the left hand side. The wing coming in nicely, keeping the ball alive. Nice little take up there from the Gray forward. Ball still available for for Gray. Referee stopping the match here. Um, can't quite see if there's foul play, but it seems like the referee is showing that he made a tackle without using the arms, and it's a, another penalty for Gray. No. Derbyshire kicking the ball out again. I'm sure Gray is going to drive this.
Gray's been successful so far in all their lineouts. Haven't lost the lineout yet. It's going to be interesting to see if Mia's going to compete here or if they're actually just going to smash. But the ref is stopping the game for an injury. Of play here. Um, there's a mere player is down. Can't quite see who the player is, but play has been stopped. Just to recap what happened in the first 20 minutes of this match is that Gray has been dominating the game so far. Mia playing good at patches, but uh, Gray dominating the game so far, especially in the forwards. Um, I think they scored two tries from a mall um, and one beautiful try going out wide. We applied decent pressure in the first 10 minutes, but let it go a little bit in the last 10, not quite making the same positive hits um, and applying pressure on the rucks of Gray. Player getting up there. Don't quite know if he'll be able to continue. The ref calling them back for the line out now. So play is about to resume again. Six minutes left in this first half. Yeah, the mere player going off the field. He's going to have to be replaced. It seems like Moss coming off the hooker. Nice line from Gray again. Mia trying to sack it there, but not getting it right. And pulling the ball, unfortunately, down as advantage for Gray again. See what Gray can do with the advantage. Fly off, throwing a dummy there, going himself. Getting over the advantage line. Ball still available for Gray. Uh, Mia overfolding, unfortunately, a little bit on the right-hand side. And left space on the left for Gray to go over. Great try again by Gray. And it seems like it's the second try for the four lock. Um, Jaden scoring again on the left side. Mia just overfolding and leaving space on the left available. Gray had the advantage, nothing to lose, and they went to the blind side and scored a lovely try. It seems like the kicking duties have been swapped around, and Joseph taking. On the kicking duties now, the number 10. Nice kick, good direction, but just short, unfortunately. Mirfield is quite big. Um, so it's quite a distance from the corner for the under-14s. This is a full-size rugby field. It can't get much wider than this. So um, difficult for the young lads to kick it over from the corners. Four minutes left in the first half. Let's see if Mia can reply. Just put some points on the scoreboard here in the first half. will be nice for them. Oh, a bit of a flat kickoff. Ball not going 10, but Gray playing the advantage. Players are allowed to do it. Clever play by Gray there. Uh, ball was available. And Gray on the attack again. Nice taken up there by the forwards. We are trying to apply pressure on the ruck. I don't know if it's quite legal. Un offsides, unfortunately, there. Ref not picking it up, but. Um, Good take up there for Gray. Space still available on the right hand side. Lots of space available. If they can just get it through the hands. And unfortunately, player holding on to the ball. And it seems like a knock on there by Gray. And it's Mia ball. Mia getting away with it there. Gray had a nice overlap there on the right hand side. And luckily, a nice tackle by Mia. But Gray may be just holding on to the ball too much. Instead of just passing before the player. He first wanted to suck in the play and then pass the ball and good tackle by Mia led to a knock on. Another injury here. Ref just stopped 
play. I can't quite see from which team. It seems like a mere player down again. I think both teams, uh, or both schools, haven't played too many fixtures so far this year. I think it's about the third or fourth game for for both schools. Um, Grace, in general, the handling has been decent today. Um, only thing from here, maybe giving too many penalties away, but Gray playing some nice rugby, even in tough conditions as the water is still coming down here. Um, Gray not really knocking on the ball too many times. I think that might be the second knock of the first half for them. So, boys playing nice rugby so early on in the season. Um, injuries, obviously, a massive concern. No one wants injuries this time of the year, um, as the season is still long. Okay, play continue. No players off the field. Scrum for Muir. Gray applying quite a bit of pressure on the scrum, but Pillay doing okay, getting the ball back to Matabese. He decided to take up the ball. They didn't have much of a choice, but he's getting through the line. Brilliant break by Matabese. Um, taking the play up all the way to the halfway line. Muir being in a very tough situation, and Matabese getting them out of trouble, but it seems like Gray has made a turnover, unfortunately. The clean is for Muir just arriving a little bit too late. Um, and Gray, just as I said, no knocks, not too many knock-ons in the first half. There's a knock-on by Gray, and it gives Muir the opportunity to attack here. There is space out wide. Um, Mooney deciding to take up the ball, rather. Ball still available for Muir. It's a bit scrappy from Muir. They're not quite sure what they want to do with the ball. Um, Bengashi, a nice clean out there, making the ball available for um, Pillay. But Muir players standing still as they receive the ball. Um, Gray trying to flood the ruck, I think a little bit illegally there from the side. Um, and Muir just keep on throwing the ball back. Must just maybe slow it down a little bit and try again. Yeah, the ball goes through the hands. Inside centre taking up the ball nicely. Very strong carry. Um, giving the ball to Moni, taking it out wide. Um, just throwing the ball away again, but Pillay is luckily there to scoop it up. Uh, ball still available for Muir. And Moni taking up the ball nicely there. Maybe a little bit too straight up, but he manages to go down and make the ball available for Mia. That should... Oh, that was an illegal turnover. Um, but I think Gray got hold of that ball, not releasing the tackler. But good turnover, nevertheless. If the ref didn't see it, it was a good turnover. Kick by Derbyshire. The scrums off into the middle of the field. Gray getting away with it there. Unfortunately, a little knock. And the ref playing the first off. Um... Scored 20, nil for Gray. Gray dominating the first half, especially in the forwards. Muir trying a bit towards the end, but a little bit scrappy. You can understand the with the rain, it's going to be tough to control the ball nicely. But um, good first half, and we'll be back shortly with all the action from the second half.
Welcome back to the second half. Shallow kickoff there from Muir College, changing the tactics up a little bit. Went deep first off and now quite flat. Gray having the ball back, deciding to put a pot up in the middle of the field from the fly off. A lot of space available here on the right hand side for Gray, but fly off taking it up. Muir getting nicely off the line. They're trying to close the space so they can't get the ball through their hands. Uh, turnover from your college. Um, Flav isolated a little bit there. Pilate deciding to take a quick tap. Um, going on his own. This also might be a turnover. Um, good clean there from here. It seems like the ball is still available for for Mir College. Ball been taken up there, I think, by Moss, if I'm not mistaken. The, the hooker. Referee calling them back for a little knock on there. Mia just with the ball trying to play a bit too quickly in this weather, not quite running onto the ball, um, making a few mistakes. It's nice to see they're trying to punish the team when they get a turnover, but not quite sure where they want to go and then, um, and then forcing a few mistakes and not running onto the ball hard, making it easy for Gray to uh, defend. Another solid scrum by Gray, taken by the eighth man, and then to Derbyshire going out here to the fullback, getting through the line, lovely, breaking inside. Maybe should have decided to go out here to number 14, um, but taking up the ball, ball still available for Gray, playing a little block there to the scrum off again, taking the ball up in the midfield. Good clean by Gray, space available on the left hand side if they can get the ball through the hands. Great passing there by Gray in the wet weather. And the centre breaking through there nicely. Maybe should have taken past the ball outside at a one-on-two uh, one situation there, but decided to break into the midfield. But the ball still available for Gray. Lovely passage of play here for Gray at the moment, and then unfortunately turnover coming um, for Mia College. Very good there by Mia College. Um, just applying some pressure on the ruck there, but lovely rugby from Gray running the ball all the way out of there. 22 basically into the Muir College 22. Muir College not going for the quick tap this time, just kicking the ball out there, but uh, not too far, just outside the 22. Um, still a little bit under pressure, but I think this might be the first line out for the Muir College first uh, under 14 A side. Let's hope they can get the ball back and exit nicely. skew throw in there by Muir College and unfortunately Gray's got a lovely attacking opportunity on the 15 just outside the Muir College 22 Gray bringing on some changes it seems like they bring on three changes um, straight away can't exactly see the numbers but it looks like the fly half is uh, going off the field um, I don't know if it's Stone replacing him 
but a nice little game there by Liddell. He's coming off. Um, and it seems like it's a new tight head um, in Owen's place. Gray still dominate, dominant in the scrum. Uh, good defense there by Pele, putting pressure on the scrum of Derbyshire. Um, but Gray still have the ball available. A pick up and go there by Gray. Maybe a little bit upright, but getting the ball back nicely. Gray still, a ball still available for Gray. Mere College living on the offside line here. But the ref hasn't picked it up yet. Um, ball coming back for Gray again. Gray deciding to take this one on runners. Uh, that's a penalty for Gray. Playing the scrum off. Um, Jaden Smith there playing the scrum off. Unfortunately, that's not allowed. And a penalty for Gray in a very dangerous position. Thinking Gray will kick out again here yeah, and then go for the mall. Another injury here. Yeah. It seems like it's by a grape, a player this time. Doesn't look too serious. Slight drizzle still going on. Um, luckily the wind hasn't picked up too much yet, so still decent this weather for, for rugby. Derbyshire taking up the ball. He's going to the touch. And a great kick there. Just about seven, eight meters out from the mere touch line. Horn, the vice captain, putting the ball in again. Um, had a pretty successful day in the lineout so far. I don't think they've lost the lineout yet. Gray hoping to put the first points on the board for the second half. Five minutes into the second half, no points scored yet. Good lineout there by Gray. Oh, a little fumble, but it's backwards. Gray still have the ball available. Not opting for the mall this time. Ball out to the fly-off. Good tackle by a great tackle. But the referee seems unhappy with that tackle. It might have been a bit high. Um, that might be the second or third time. Gray playing a quick tap. Muir not being tense. There's still advantage for Gray. Very close to Muir's try line. Muir keeping the man up. Driving them back a little bit. But Gray still seemed to control the ball. Oh, great defense there by Mia, but it's still advantage of Gray. Ball available. And the reserve prop just taking up the ball, and I think he's over the line. Great carry by the big man. Scoring a lovely try. Just came onto the field right now. Um, first scrum successful, and then he takes a nice little carry and scores a lovely try. First points of the half. Great 25 0 up. And about 19 minutes left in the second half. Difficult at this age to stop these big men taking up a nice carry. But I think the difference so far in this match is like the grey boys taking their carries on pace and not standing still. Mia also playing some nice rugby at patches, but standing still when they receive the ball and... The big man there just took a strong run, got the ball at pace, and no one's going to stop him that close to the line. And that's the first successful conversion of the day. Um, I assume that was Stone, the reserves, um, fly half that kicked that ball over. And great taking their points, tally to 27. Rain coming down a bit stronger now, as I'm sure you can see on the cameras, but... Um, No one in the Eastern Cape is going to complain about rain at the moment. Yeah. 
Matabese waiting for the ball, finally getting a ball. Hopefully he'll go a bit deeper this time. Now oh, that's a better kick off, putting the ball a bit deeper. Oh, Mio missing the tackle, unfortunately. And Gray making a strong carry there back to the 10 meter line. Unfortunately, a little knock. It is getting very wet out there. It's so difficult for the players to control the ball, especially when it comes at awkward heights and and pops out of rucks. But uh, good carry there by Gray. Unfortunately, just knocking the ball in the ruck there. Nice op uh, attacking opportunity here for Mia inside the half of Gray. If they can get the right shoulder here, which will be difficult because Gray's got a very strong scrum. They might go blind here. Yeah. No, deciding to go on the open side. Center taking up the ball, going out wide. Moni picking up the ball. He's still running and finally get tackled out. Yes, that was out. Um, maybe running a little bit laterally again, not running onto the ball. But a nice little break there by Moni. Unfortunately, just get bundled out and not keeping the ball inside the field. But it's at least nice to see Mia trying to run the ball. And managing to get it through the hands even in these wet conditions. Horn, the vice captain, putting in the ball again. Successful day at Hooker so far. Gray opting for the five man line out and winning the ball easily again. Derbyshire to the fly half, setting it up with. I think one of the flanks there, I'm not quite sure. Ball recycled again nicely. Muir putting nice pressure there on the ruck. And Gray just kicking the ball back to the halfway line. Muir fielding it nicely, but a lot of great players there putting on pressure onto the Muir back three. But it seems like Muir's managed to get the ball back, but a scrappy ball, unfortunately. Um, maybe just slow it down a little bit and set the ball up again. Great carry there by one of the mere forwards ball available here a little bit of space out wide morning deciding to cut back inside making some meters um Muir still in the half uh, unfortunately the great player diving over the rug there and giving a penalty away to Muir. Um, Pillay deciding to play quickly again um like the fact that the Muir boys want to play maybe not the best tactics at this stage of the match getting another penalty for throwing down Pillay playing quickly once more and then kicking the ball away um, interesting tactic there. Um, Mia must just maybe settle down a bit. They're actually not looking bad at times with ball in hand, but um, just making a few silly errors there. Um, but they're back in the grey half, Horn having the ball to feed into the line outs. Um, Mia's going to have to defend well. Yeah, I think Grey might go for the mall, especially with the rain coming down harder. It might be a good tactic in this sort of, uh, sort of weather just to maul the ball up and gain some field advantage. Um, first ball that Gray unfortunately lost in the line out. Not a bad line out, just throwing a little bit um, over the top and the Gray flank not being able to field the ball. And it's a scrum for Mia. Mia would be pretty happy about this. A lovely attacking scrum on the Gray 10 meter line. Have a little bit of space on the blind outside. Seems like um, on the blind side. I mean, seems like the grey only left one wing there. So, eight, nine, fourteen, a possibility. Yeah. Um, scrum going backwards. Muir deciding to go open side to Matabese passing the ball to the inside centre. Nice little carry there. Muir cutting back a little bit um, with the inside centre, but getting the ball back. Then at, uh, changing direction. I think Tumoni there taking up the ball. Another penalty for another penalty for Muir. Pillay playing quickly again, trying to force going wide, and the ball is uh, falling all over the place. Moni under pressure, but managed to get away there from the first tackler, but a knock on there by Muir and Gray Ball. Muir just maybe forcing things a little bit, not being uh, not being patient enough, and um, Gray's brilliant defence just makes it easy for them to turn over the ball. Gray very strong on defence so far today, not giving, not missing many tackles and giving uh, Mir too much space. But Mir maybe must just be a little bit more patient, recycle the ball, and and, and work with the forwards a bit before they go wide. Pillay putting on a bit of pressure again there on um, 
on the on Derbyshire and the ball fumbling but backwards apparently. So ball still available for Gray. Gray just sitting up there with a 12 passing out wide. There is space available if you can get the ball through the hands. Um, Gray still managing to hold on to the ball even though the ball's fumbling around a bit. Um, Gray, uh, mere shorter numbers here on the right hand side. Um, but Derbyshire decided to go for a box kick. Good kick, good tackle there. Caught Mir with the ball on the halfway line, but it seems like Mir will get that ball back. And a bit of fumble there from one of the props, and but Mir still having the ball, but lost about 10 meters now. A little bit of space on the blind side here, but it's a turnover from the reserve prop. Oh, the referee calling him back there. Can't quite see what the penalty is for, but uh, Mia lucky to get away with that one. Maybe just have to slow it down. Uh, maybe push the man in the face. Okay. Yes, the big man pushing the guy. Not allowed at schoolboy rugby anymore. And Mia going for the touch and just kicking the ball inside the half of Gray. Ten minutes left. Gray leading 27-0. Second half definitely a little bit slower than the first half, but obviously a lot harder to handle the ball. Um, it's getting wet now. Good line out by Mia, wonderful line out there. Just throw the ball to the middle, and Mia getting a penalty. Let's see if Mia backs the line out again. I think it's a good idea to maybe go for a touch again, just slow the game a bit down. and try and gain some advantage, field advantage. But the Bears are going for the touch. Yes, just managed to get it out inside the 22 of Gray. Hopefully Mia can uh, put up a nice line out there and have a nice attacking platform. Maybe Mia just playing the ball a bit quick in the wet weather, like maybe hold it on, go down, and then get rid of the ball, making it difficult, putting a lot of pressure on Pillay to get the ball away in this wet weather, standing very deep as well. Mia going for the option to throw over the line out. Mia getting the ball back. The throw was straight, and it's in the... But it, a ruck under pressure at the moment, and that was hands in the rucks. Yes, that was a good call by the referee. Um... Ball still available for Mia. Let's see if they're going to kick out again. Yes, Mia going for the touch again. Trying to get as close to the great try line as possible. A good kick by Mia. They're about 10 meters out from the try line. Mia's back standing very deep in this wet weather. I think maybe not the best idea. Um, maybe get a little bit closer to one another. Just make sure they control the ball and put up a few phases. I think that's what Gray did well at patches, but uh, that's been lacking of this game is uh, um, just setting up a few phases, going through the phases and phases, and eventually pressure will will break the defensive line. We are going backwards here, but they got the ball back, and then just throwing it loosely back to Matabese. So it's luckily breaking through there, so we are back on the attack. Um, ball coming, no, ref calling it back for a knock-on. Mia just throwing the ball around a bit too much in the wind. Not, not, no one taking responsibility for taking the ball up and getting it back safely. Um, but Mia still in a good position on the field. Can put pressure on Gray here, try to get the ball back. It's difficult. Um, to kick and pass the ball in this sort of weather. So, like, if Mia can put a little bit of pressure on that scrum, that's Gray scrum still looking very solid. Pillay is very quick behind, but according to the ref, a little bit too quick, and that's a penalty. That's an easy let out, unfortunately, for Gray. I like the fact that Pillay is trying to put pressure on the scrum off. That's wonderful. But it's a bit of an easy let out for Gray there. And Derbyshire just kicking out the ball nicely there, down to, to about a 10 meter line but Graysel's inside their own half Horn putting in the ball again Gray winning another line out 
Only one has been unsuccessful so far today. Gray getting the ball through the hands, running nicely there by the big centre, I think. Ball still available for Gray. A little bit of space here on the right-hand side if they can play it quickly. Lots of space. Scrum have decided to kick the ball over the top. Still space available. Muir in a dangerous position. And unfortunately for Gray, the ball just not bouncing the right way. Um, clever play there by the scrum. I just saw there's lots of space over the top. Easier, easier than getting the ball through the hands in this wet condition, just putting it over the top. And it will be Muir's ball. Um, the, the Gray player just kicking it there into touch. Another injury um, for Muir. So just a stop in play with seven minutes left. Only one try scored so far in the second half. Just by the big uh, the big prop, the reserve prop. Scored a lovely try. But um I saw some nice rugby in the second half as well, even though there weren't as many tries as in the first half. Play to resume again. Seems like the Muir player is still on the field. And Moss trying to put the ball into the line out. Dangerous position this for Muir. Let's hope they can get the ball back and exit well. I'm sure Gray will apply a lot of pressure on this line out. Front ball. Ball going through everyone's hands, but a little knock on there by Muir. Just the players at the back of the line not expecting quite the ball to come to them. Um, knocking on the ball and it's a great attacking platform for Gray just inside the 22 of Mir on the right hand side of the field a little 8, 9, 14 uh, sure can be on here have a little bit of space but deciding to go to the open side fly off to inside centre or outside centre I think that might be Cook taking up the ball there Ball still available for Gray, popping out a little bit messy, but illegally by Muir. So it's a penalty for Gray. Deciding to go for the quick tap, but Muir wasn't 10 there. Still available, lots of space and a knock on, unfortunately, but they're, they're coming back for the penalty. So Gray still have attacking platform. Had a try on there on the right hand side, but unfortunately, a uh, little knock there. But Gray taking up the ball again. Looking good here on the try line. Nice defense by Muir, really putting in some effort there to get the Grey boys backwards. Wonderful defense, but they don't have many players out wide left. And the big man going for his second try um, of the day, picking up the ball from the back of the uh, mall. Afro Ruck and just diving over the try line. Lovely second try of the match. Gray taking up their points tally with the 32 with the conversion to come. There's five minutes left in the match. Just pushing it out to the right. Gray, unfortunately, not getting the conversion and the score is 32 0. Four minutes left in the match now. Let's hope that uh, the match can be finished off strongly as the rain still continues to pour down. Must say, making it difficult for the players to handle the ball, but they've, had a, they've done a decent job so far. It hasn't been the easiest of conditions. First off, lovely weather, second off, a little bit tighter as Matabese kicks in flat. The Muir boys are um, challenging for the ball, but Gray getting it back. Little box kick there by the Gray number nine into open space, ball bouncing infield. Muir struggling to field the ball, and then the Muir player running over the touchline, giving Gray a lovely attacking opportunity here on the 22. Let's see if Gray will go for the mall again as the water comes down. Even more now.
Moon putting in the ball again. Gray winning the ball, deciding to rather go out wide. Fly off setting it up there, a little bit of a forward pass head to, the, to Cook, but he's doing lovely there, breaking through a few tackles, still has got the ball. Ball available for Gray, lots of space on the left-hand side of the field here. Deciding not to go through the hands, and the big man giving a nice offload to his wing to score in the corner. Lovely play there by the big prop. I'm clearly biased as I was a prop myself, but... Um, Lovely play by the man. He's had a lovely second half. Two tries and then a nice offload to his player on the side for a try in the corner. Lovely lucky there by Gray and taking up the score to 37-0 with a conversion to come. Very difficult conversion in these conditions. Let's see how the reserves uh, fly will do. Two minutes left in the match. There will be time for another kickoff. The direction seemed good, but just a little bit short. It's not a bad kick there from the fly off. Possibly last play of the game. Flat kickoff again by Matabese, but not far enough. The grey player actually playing the ball, but that was a knock on. Um, oh, they see the ball's out, so that will be a line out for Mio College with 50 seconds left to go in the match. Last attacking opportunity for Mio College. They hope they can make use of it. They're just inside the half of grey. Line out just over the top, but nicely fielded there. Ball still available for Mia. Grey boys put, applying a lot of pressure on the rug there. And I think they eventually won the ball. But the Bears are fighting back for the ball and getting the ball back. And then a little knock on. And then offside play by Mia College. Ref luckily not picking up, up the offside play there by the Mia player. Mia losing the ball in the rug. Mbengashi then going and applying pressure on the grey ruck and getting the ball back but then an unfortunate knock by Mia and this will be the last scrum of the day as the time is up another solid scrum by grey maybe scrumming a bit early there Rev just blowing his whistle and calling them back Ball fell in by, picked by the eighth man to Derbyshire, then to the inside centre, on to Cook with a bit of space here, deciding to play on the inside. Ball still available for Gray. Mia trying to apply pressure on the ruck, but ball coming back, now going to the left with a nice carry there by the flank, it seems like. Ball, a lot of space available on the outside, just get the ball through the hands. The Gray player rather deciding to take it up, but there's still unfortunate little knock on just before the trial line well a nice way to finish off the game great playing some exhilarating rugby um and finishing off the game deserve it winners the ref seems to think there's time for one more scrum um just to go through the match two tries scored by gray so far in the second half um three tries sorry i apologize three tries putting on 17 points half time score was 20 0 then putting on 17 points in the second half. And then scoring another try just now to take the score to 42-0. Um, Gray definitely the deserving winners. Muir College playing well at patches. Just not able to apply enough pressure throughout the game. Um, thank you for joining us for this match. Um, and I hope you guys will enjoy the rugby with us as we go further in the day. Um, first in fixture kicking off at quarter to two let's hope the weather holds out and the fields hold out so we can still have some decent rugby by the end of the day final kick of the game this to take the score to 44 0 
unfortunately just missing the kick to the right and that's the end of the game great deserve deserved winnings winners 42 nil um thanks for joining us Voor die kijkers op die lucht, uh, ons hang net aan voor die volgende kijk wat gaan beginnen. Dit boord die onder 15 A's te wees, so ons wacht net ja. voor die spanning om die baan te komen. Ja, 
Dat is ook paar meter, ons is terug bij hier. So Ego wants to join. Can join. While it's while it's dryish.
Ja, dat is Grijs uh, 115 A's voor de optrap. En hier komt meer 115 A's. Groot gejuich van de spanmaat. Ons wacht nog voor die commentator. So, uh, wees alsjeblieft geduldig. Zodra die commentator niet aankomt, gaan we ons beginnen om toe.
Ja, op jullie stadium wacht ons toch commentator. Niemand nog opgedaan is, we wees als een brief geduldig met ons. Uh, die microfoon is recht, maar die commentator is niet zo niet. En die wedstrijd is daarom al zo'n minuut en een kwart aan die gang. Ik 
Oh, that was the first try for uh, Gray College. Unfortunately, we don't have the commentators yet. We're still waiting on somebody to come. The conversion was not successful, so Gray runs 5-0. And 20 minutes left in the game.
Tá bola. 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 Tá
Right, we've got uh, one of the first team guys here from here, Jude. He's going to give us some comment, uh, commentary on this game. Jude, over to you. Morning, people. It's the under 15 game. It's looking quite tight. They're punching at the rocks. Oh, and he's, and he's gone. The play win. Interception. And he scores. Five points. 17 all right now. We're just waiting for the kicker. Amazing try from behind the 50. And he went to go and score from the interception. Yes, the replay, slow mo. An amazing try. And he's lining up for the kick. And it sails over. It's 19 no right now. Mio boys are getting ready for the kickoff. Gray are ready, ready. What's the ball? And Gray take the ball and they play. The Mio boys are going over for the clean. Seems they've stolen the ball. Big hit from a great player. And Gray seemed to turn the ball over. It's Gray's ball. It seems the great end is going for a touch. It's a tough kick. The ball hasn't found touch, but the Mew boys are going over the deadline. It's going to be a 22 meter dropout. Sorry. Oh, the referee is calling the players back for scrum. Miopo. and they take the eight is taking it up. The ten goes for B carry from the center from you. And they play from the from the right. Well taken up by Sasha. They're changing directions. Good tackle by Gray as they get him behind the green line. Offload by Mio. And it seems to be a knock on from Mio College. But Gray is playing it on. Forward pass. 
minutes left of the half and it seems to be crazy ball. Yes it is crazy ball and they're going for touch. Good kick to find touch. Three minutes left right now of the half. Keen to see what Craig has planned. Knowing Greg could be a good more. And they take it for the more. They play. Big carry from the Grey forward. changing direction. Big carry from the grey forward with the offload. And it seems to, it wasn't a try. Very close though. Good effort from the boy from grey. Seems to be a scrum. With two minutes left of the half. It's Muir's ball. Let's see if they can get out of the danger zone. Getting reset, still a ball with a few with seconds left on the shot on the clock. Let's see if Mio can get out of the danger zone. Mio ball, and they go for the exit. And he finds touch with the exit. Grey line out. 25 seconds left on the clock. Mio's ball and they're going up. Big hit from Mio boy. And they're going. What an amazing carry. The back line is setting up now. Let's see what Mew has in store for us. They're playing it wide and they're going and the Mew wing gets tackled off a touch. That is the half, ladies and gentlemen. So Jude, it's your first time commentating here for us. Yes, sir. Uh, I just be a look like at this moment. I know they're trailing uh, by 19. Uh, no. I feel like they still have fight in them and they can come. I feel like they still have lots of fight in them and they can still make a comeback seeing the last play. I uh, see the winners at least lift up a bit now. The yes, is not there anymore. It's not really there anymore. How so. does it look for your first team today? Our first team is ready, sir. 
So we'll come out guns blazing today. So. Yeah, and if it's raining, does it going to affect you? It really won't affect us. So we have a game plan. We're going to stick to the game plan. So. Yeah, and you're going to give them hell? Yes, sir. That's the plan, sir. And that sounds good. What position do you play? I play eighth man. Sir. You eighth man? Yes. Sir. Okay, and uh, you say you've got a good strategy for this afternoon? Yes, sir. Okay. Let's hang on a couple of minutes. Uh, we'll start the second half soon. Yes, sir. And then Jude will commentate for us again. No problem, sir. Thank, Thank you. you for having me, sir. Right, the second half is about to start, and we've got you, uh, the eighth man of the first team, commentating for us again. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. The second half is underway, underway, and I think we're going to have a very exciting second half. That's about to start. Underway. Nice deep pick from the Cray boy. Good take from you as he takes it up. They're looking to set up and exit from here. Oh, and they take it up. Big carry from the Mule boy. Cleaners are a bit late. Scrappy play at the rack. Good rushing up from the Cray. And they take him all the way to the try line. And Grail about to counter from the exit. He carry and they lose the ball forward in the tackle. Scrum down, mule ball. Still 19 now. The second half is underway.
Miopol. Who's come from Cray? Countering Mio. But the ball is out. Miopol. And he exits. He doesn't find touch though in the counter. Cray with the big carry from the winger. And they take up a bomb with a huge carry. Good bullet with the offload and they're going forward. Slowly but surely they're reaching the game. And they change direction. Overlap is on. Wonderful ball. What a line. And he's through. Through for the try from Craig. And it seems to be 24 to 0. Craig leading. Slow, slow move. Amazing line from the grey boy. Kick is underway. It's quite a tough kick from the corner of the 22. Let's see if the grey boy can get it over. Unlucky, the kick just missed. But they have a comfortable lead, but Muir should be able to come back here. There seems to be a substitution underway from the Muir team. You are getting ready for the drop. Get the game underway again. And Mio rush up. Big carry again from the grey boy. And he goes way over the game line. Nice plus one. Good tackle from the Mio boy. They make a nice drive again. Good carry from the Cray boys, driving his legs in the tackle. Amazing behind the back play and they go. Amazing move. And they're pushing forward. Good tackle from the Mule boy. Slowly going over the game now. And they're going. It gets the offload in the tackle. Unlucky with the pass. The ball is lost. Mio's ball. Gray seemed to have won the ball back. Big hit from the Gray boy as he's pumping his legs. Nice play from Gray using the space. But the Mio boy driving back in the tackle. They're playing same side. Good hit from the Mio boy. But the ball gets passed. And they're playing it up. And 
It looks to be a, mu a scrum. Crazy ball. Let's scram, let's see what they can do here. Can they put another try under the post? Uh, it looks like the referee is not happy with something there and he makes him re scrum again. Yes, I'm not sure what the problem is, sir. But a big scrum from Gray. And they play down the right. Yet again over the gain line. Pull it from Gray. Anyway, it's folding quite slowly. Let's see if they can get there. Taking the ball up well for Gray. They're playing down the left again. Good carry from the grey ball. Seems they are playing same side rugby. Let's see if they have the hands. And he goes through again. Amazing try from the grey boy. Under the sticks. Amazing try. This kick is right in front of the post. The grey boy should get it over easily. And he puts them ahead again. Seems to be 31 to 0 right now. It's 17 minutes on the clock of the second half. Hopefully the Mio boys have the heart to come back from this. I'm sure they do. But well played from the Grey boys. Setting up for the kick. Nice deep drop from the Mule Boy and Gray are taking it up. They have good ball carriers that make many meters. And they take it up strong. And the ball is stolen from the Mule player. What a ball. Amazing carry. Through in the space. And it seems to be a line from you. I think it's a mule penalty, and they're about to take it up. It's a line out from you. Crazy line out. And they take it. Let's see if they can get out of there danger zone and they play it from the danger zone and the grey boy goes showing a little flair but he's going from the danger zone all the way over the 20 over the 50 ball is stolen from the mule player big drive from the grey boys as they take him down Big carry from the Mule boy as it goes over the gain line. They're looking for quick play. And it's a little cheeky chip over the top, but the Grey boy receives the ball and they're playing, they're countering. Going all the way around. And he's still going with the offload. 
and he gets taken down in the Mio 22. And they're still taking the ball up with strong carries and the offload. But Mio make a crucial tackle. The great boys are hoping to spread the ball here. Yeah? Amazing fin as they go over again. Under the poles once again. Amazing try once again from the Grey Boys. And it's 36 nil right now to Grey. With 13 minutes left on the clock. And the Grey Boy gets the ball over through the poles. Thirty-eight nil right now to Gray. Gray seemed to be ready and set for the kick. Here. to kick deep and put pressure on the grey in the 22. Oh no. Going for the chase. Another offload from the grey boy as they go through the space. And he's still going, showing some flair. And he's gone. Another try to Gray. The game is slipping away from you, but they've put their hearts in. And Gray are in the lead again with 44 to 0. 12 minutes left in the clock. Here's the slow mo replay. Grey boys lining up for the kick now to balls. Let's see if we can get this conversion over. Good conversion from the Grey boy as he puts them even more ahead of the game. 11 minutes left of this game. The New York boys just need to show some fight in this game. Well played to Cray. They're playing really well. Looking for the space, giving offloads and attacking the line. Amazing play from them. is taken up from the graveyard. Strong carry as he takes the ball up. And they take it up once more. Pumping his legs in the tackle with the offload. And he goes. And the Mew boys steal the ball. Quick tap and he goes. Amazing play from US, they're passing the ball. Seems they're getting called back right now from the ref. Mio penalty. They're going for touch. I'm mistaken. Going for the tap. The grey line is ready and they take the ball up. 
in the carry. Goody from Gray. And your boys are over the ball and they play it. And Gray drive Mio back. Seems grabs Mio ball. Another penalty to Mio. And he takes the tap and he goes. Big hit from the grey boy. Mio is cleaning over the ball. Penalty awarded to Mio again. A few minutes left in the game. And they take the quick tap. Cleaners are there nice and early. And they're playing the ball wide. Amazing from the Mio boy. They're in grace 22 right now. Let's see what they can do in the dying moments of the game. Club and Gray clear the ball. And Mio take the ball up once again. But get driven back in the tackle. Good tackle from Grace to stop Mio from getting over the gain line. Another strong tackle from the Grey boy. And Grace cleaning over the ball, but it seems to be Mio's penalty once again. One minute left in this game. Let's see what Mio can put for. Seven minutes. Seven minutes left in the game. My mistakes. And Mio take it up. Amazing grabber. But the Mio boys take but the Grey boys take it up once again. Strong carry from the Grey boy. And the cleaners are there really nice and quick. And they're playing behind. Nice show and go. And the Grey boy is through. He's still going. And he gets the pass off. Still going. What a try from Gray. Amazing footwork and teamwork with the offload. And Gray have put 50 on the board against Mio College. Very difficult kick for the conversion from the corner in the 22 once again. Let's see if the grey boy can get this one over. And it doesn't sail through. But they still have the lead. Five minutes left of the second half. And the Grey Boys take it up once again. Amazing carry as he makes many meters. Another strong carry. And Grey are using. They're looking to use the space. Nice strong carry in the tackle. Another very strong carry as Craig get over the gain line. Nice cross kick but there's no great boys chasing and it's in your Mio go for the kick again, but it goes into touch. Four minutes left in this game.
Can Mio College push and get a try in this game? Salina, Grey Ball. Grey retain the ball and they're playing it. Nice strong carry from Grey once again. And it seems they're playing the ball. Good tackle from the Mio boy as he takes down the big Grey boy. Mio penalty. And they go for the quick tap once again and knock it on, unfortunately. Knock on. Grey ball. Three minutes left of this game. Let's see if Grey can put another try under the sticks. Scrum on the half. Grey ball. Nice scrum, very strong, good scrum. And they're playing with the space again. And Gray take it up strongly once more with the offload in the tackle. Good fight from both teams. Strong clean from Gray, from Mio. My mistake. Mio retain the ball. They steal it from there. Show and go. Let's see if Mio can use the space here. And Mio get driven back in the tackle once more in the dying moments of the game. Two minutes left in this game. Grey on the defensive side of the game. Nice clearance. And Grey take the ball up once more. Nice offload, good teamwork. And they're so close to the try line. Let's see if they can go over. Nice strong carry from the Grey again. Seems to be grey ball. Seconds left in this game. It was an amazing effort from both teams. The last scrum of the game, and Craig take it up once more. The strong carry, but Mio denied the try. Good carry, and Craig go over. Amazing carry once more from the big Ray forward. Last conversion of the game. Amazing play from Gray, but an amazing effort to Mew as well. That showed their fight throughout this whole game. And the conversion is good. Well played to both teams. Amazing effort. They should both both teams should be really proud of themselves. Jude, thank you very much. No problem. Appreciate thank it you and good luck you. with your first team game thank today. You very much, sir. Keep your plan. Yes, Let's sir. see how it happens. Thank you very much. Enjoy your day further, sir.
Thank you very much, sir. Thank you.
Hello and welcome to uh, the third match of the day with me at College this morning. Uh, a rivalry between the two schools extending back all the way to 1893. Third derby in a row after 20 year absence. Uh, Crown High School and New York College. Today initiated Gray in the Azure, the sky blue jersey, the white shirt. And uh, Muir in the navy blue and sky blue stripes. With me, Gerd van Dijk, uh, the, the head of rugby and first team coach at Muir. Your thoughts on uh, the, 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 the matches so far today, the activity up here on the hill in Karicha? Yes, it's lovely to have this fixture back. I don't think we have hosted you guys in a long time, so it was lovely to host you guys once again. Um, Tough matches for the teams. I, th I thought some of the teams did pretty well. Just get punished severely when they make mistakes, and I think this is going to be much of the same. Um, if Mio makes too many mistakes, I think you guys are going to punish us severely. But there has been some good passages of plays and positives for us as a school to take from the matches that's been played already. Obviously, you've put to point out that uh, Gray has 900 boys and Mio about 450. So quite a numerical advantage for the boys uh, from across the Chetty River in, uh, in, in Kabecha. Vernacular correct, yeah. Um, as a scratch and a 16 side, a few players to watch. Tristan Kemp at 10 is a very talented boy. Uh, Noam Beasley at outside centre also uh, a bit of a go when he gets hand on the ball. I see Kieran Killen is not playing, he's, he's in, picked up an injury uh, in the good one against Ronald Bosch a few weeks ago. It's Muir kick off deep. Sorry, great kick off deep to Muir. And oh, it's an attempt to run it out here. Yeah? Bit of work to do there for Lyle Davids, I think it is. Yeah, some players to watch out for Muir is um, Aviwe Seis and Onke Machola, our uh, centre pairing. Has, has had some good moments in, uh, in the season so far. Chance to clear the lines. And the kick goes across the poles. Hit quite hard in the, in the action now. Here's Mbizi. And Mbizi straight through. Step to the inside under the poles, easy as you like. A poor clearance from your punish there. And 5 0 to Gray inside the first minute of the game. Yeah, unfortunate things we can't do. A poor kick and led to a try straight away. And poor defence, unfortunately. So we have the action replay of Mbizi. Lovely feet as he shifts off that right foot, going under the poles, and a very easy conversion attempt here for Tristan Kemp. That's a under 16 side of Gray has been a bit of a juggernaut. Probably only lost four matches since uh, they arrived at the school in Grad Hat. Only Paul Ruiz and Gray College have had their number in recent years. And over it goes 7 0. I remember this team two years ago at our festival when we celebrated our 200 years. Very good rugby side when they were still under 14 boys. Of course, your college turned two years old this year. Okay, a little bit younger. 167 or so. Years young. They're running for a ball. Good whack there from uh, Morris Langenhoven behind the, behind the dead ball line. Mere College taking out the dark arts here by slowing the game down a bit, it seems. <laughs> but early for that, no, surely you <laughs> Nice crowd is turning out here. Top Rain has settled, gone away for, for the moment. So they did forecast uh, Rain of biblical proportions, which hasn't really happened. Max Dakin, other side of the family from Utnake. Uncle Adrian uh, might be watching uh, Quentin Muir. Kemp with a lot of time, puts it across the poles, and he's found a bit of grass here, and that'll roll it to touch for a, a very good no, clearance, almost uh, collected in the end by Justice and Ch Chakacha. Good chase, and we will feed this line out. It's about five metres from the, the halfway from the halfway line. Fena, has, has Kemp been the flyer for this group um, since under 14? Because I remember you had a, a Pfeiffer boy, I believe, that was also quite a good player that was in this age group. The Pfeiffer has uh, left for, for Paul Ruiz in, uh, in recent months, so Kemp so it's been a bit of time there. The boys played fullback and fly half interchangeably at the time. That seems like a very solid player. Also plays first team cricket. I see the hands it goes here. As this great side, oh, finding space rather easily. And that pass, it, I think Lucky Mirror has not gone to hand. No advantage. And uh, Gray will feed that line out on the 22 there. I'm for all money, I think a knock on by, by the Gray side about 10 metres back. I spoke about Aviwe Seis and Onke Mangola before the game started um, as a good centre pairing, but they're a little bit dis disconnected on defence at the moment. So quick feed to the front of the line out there, the throw from Black Parker, the sack good from Muir College. As they prevent the drive slow ball for Gray. And the guy to the middle, 
Corn has lost forward. Well picked up by Mafon Gorsi, the captain of the Muona 16As. A bit of space and time to clear for uh, Romano Richards, who finds a good touch. Always positive to see the boys playing the basics, not uh, looking for the high risk options at all times. Then, uh, like looking at all your teams, it seems like your mauling uh, is something that has improved over the years. Has Robbie Kempson had a big influence in, in the way your forwards play? I mean, uh, your under 14 only lost one line out in a rainy game. Um, your tight, uh, your tight uh, forwards seem very well conditioned and disciplined. Uh, got to credit as well, to, uh, Mr. Kempson, to one Darren Nell, who uh, represented Muir, as old Murat uh, from, from Utnag. Darren, uh, by 200 first loss caps for the Kings and for the Cheetahs. And, uh, the line at Maul is uh, almost an obsession for the man. Really, really well structured, good coaching. Well, they're doing a great job. So the penalty uh, against Gray for. Not sure the signal there if he's off his feet to clean at, at that ruck. A chance for, for Muir to get out of get out of jail in the 22. Well, I think he'd be too happy, Richards, with that uh, effort for touch. 7 0, we are here. Five minutes into this uh, first half of the 69 clash. Winter season there's always such a buzz around the schools this time of year. It makes sense to, to a large degree to those of us involved in winter sport. And I see the first first derby of the season. Yeah, they say the year never starts until the rugby poles are up, so um, the boys also get that feeling. Uh, a bit of a buzz around the school, it's lovely to see. So Gray on tour the next couple of weeks. They're off to King William Sound to Ponce next weekend to play Dell College. The weekend after that's Weinberg boys in Cape Town. And then finally at home, the week after that, Paul Riss. Not getting any easier as well. The level of difficulty seems to rise every single week, respectfully. As it's an attempt at uh, contest the throw here from Muir comes from Kambapoi, who misses. And they picked up Pidi Nordia. Brother CJ is playing in the first team that are on advantage for the high tackle. Out the back, the pass, not the best one. But well cleaned up, and that's a nice little kick on the outside. Ref not allowing any advantage to a crew coming back for the high tackle. Well, he should have run it straight away. In terms of my understanding, if it is dangerous play, there shouldn't be an advantage, Kurt. Yes, as far as I know, I have it as well. I need to speak to the player and warn him. Um, I saw in the in a 14A match, the same thing happened as well. Now, kudos to these officials. Without them, we don't have games. It's like a lot of ire and often uh, expose the ignorance of the fan. I don't know the laws as well as they do. And they've been good so far today, to be honest. Christian Kemp finds a solid touch right on the 22. Fender, can we make some bets here? Line out drive? Yeah, I'm calling them all. Let's see, uh, no scrum off at, uh, at first receiver. Actually, we don't have a scrum off, so they should be penalised, yeah? And the call is skew throw. Interesting, I, I, I noticed that World Rugby are considering a, a, a trial this year where if there's no contest, the, the throw can't be skewed, which I quite like. Okay? Yeah, I like that law as well. I feel if the other team is not contesting, and it's, I mean, if it's marginal as well, like uh, don't, don't punish the team. If you contest, different story, make it fair then. Bit of an ad, uh, your stream coming to, to you from United Studios, based in Port Elizabeth, yeah? Drop uh, Chris Van Fier in a line if you are interested in his services, 063-075-8736. I will repeat that number a bit later. I hope you're enjoying this feed wherever you are in the world. Through the hands, it's a hard run. they big hits on Sace, the vice captain. Incredible tackle there. I see the ref's arm is out. I didn't see much illegal there, but um, I would like to know what that tackle was for, uh, what that penalty was for. Oh, he's calling a high tackle, I see. Um, the law's really tightening up uh, with some frustration in the Western Cape Grey on a tour uh, in the pre-season for a, a couple of cards at times for high tackles. Bewildered boys, coaches on both sides. And uh, but again, uh, this can be expected. The, uh, these new adjustments to the laws, uh, players as well as referees getting used to years of interpretation which have now changed and uh, mistakes will be made. Uh, this is not a test match as well, I often remind folk, it is a schools game. And uh, again, this grey side, a big Dan Daniel Nordia carrying a lot of venom. Good positive carry for him and uh, penalty here. Ruck formed and hands in is the call. And again, a chance for Gray. Uh, be disappointed with that skew throw to pull the last line. I want to make a better use of the attacking opportunity uh, after this kick from Tristan Kemp. Gray 16 outside that haven't lost this year yet. Uh, Pete Hudson Park 
And then uh, at midspeed, Ronnebosch on tour and a, and a close win against Sachs. So they're three out of three so far. I've seen they ranked uh, three in the country at the moment. Do you think that's oh. a sort of a fair reflection of, of where they are? I hate those rankings, uh, Mr. Van Vak. Yeah, I don't like them either. I just uh, I just saw them in the week and I thought, like, uh, I've heard good things about this team. That's just why I'm asking. That's a talented group of boys, but so uh, obviously see how they go. I don't want to put too much pressure on them or uh, allow those heads to get any bigger. And time it. Beasy gets given the ball with a bit of space. He's a dangerous man if he's given space to Rome. And offload is a brilliant one. And space on the outside here. The handoff is a good one. And Gray in the right part of the field. Can they make the most of this opportunity? Good pass from Swarbrick. Finds the ever reliable John Dre von Jarsholt, the eighth man. Me, unfortunately, not making enough positive hits here. And then Beasy. Time to offload on the outside. They attempt to stretch it. I think it's an Andorra. Tackled quite heavily on the outside, but Muir. Uh, Gray, keep possession. Desmond Pietras making a nice tackle there on the wing. Nice and low, the grass cutter, that's going to be penalised as well. Let's go take it to the heat. No advantage for that tackle. Team too low, no arms in the wrap. And they slowed, happy to slow it down. Pity uh, Nordea taps and goes. And he should be over, try. Unstoppable force, you move objects, but uh, some of the force there couldn't resist it. Uh, Gray will score their second try uh, 10 minutes into the second half, 12 to nothing. Who scored that try there, Fenner? That was Daniel Nordia the tight head. Daniel Nordia the tight okay. As you see the replay, taps and goes. And it's a matter of power there. Muir Pack unable to stop him as he stretches out and scores the try. You got a simplish conversion for Tristan Kemp. This is great side. Seem to be building the innings here. Softening this mirror side up. They're happy to, to force the contact point and try and create space on the outside for their backs. Side coached by one uh, Matt Taylor-Smith. Old Gray uh, played for the Kings during their resurgence in the, in the 20, 2010 years. He retired due to, to a neck injury. And uh, at tremendous value does a very enthusiastic coach. Happily assisted by Kuma Ngajima. Who also joined the school in uh, the last few months. Standing sports administrator takes a lot of pressure off me. I'm very really happy to have him. It's always good to have those guys on your side. Let's have a uh, foul to now the conversion to Kemp, and it remains 12 0 as we uh, get into the, the second, uh, the first third of this half has passed. It's a nice hanging restart. Oh, anyone's ball here. Chakoma managed to get hands on to it. Zamirat's piling to that. It might have held him up here. Ref says, let him go. No, he's in the air. So this ball should be turned over. And that's excellent Mir uh, work by the Mirats. As so they have their first incursion into Gray's half. Yeah, Mir needed it. And it's, it'll be nice to see what Mir does with the ball here. Yeah? First time I think they have an attacking opportunity. Uh, because on defence, Mir just not making enough positive heat and allowing Gray to free their arms is making it quite easy for them to attack. So it will be nice to see what they can do with the ball. Let me mention that Michael Ursa is in starting at 12 today. was in the seaside as, an, as a grade 8. Very powerful age group, this uh, grade 10 lot at, at Gray. All of four and a half teams this year. Nearly, a, nearly a, an east side. Boys rock up for training and we'll get some games for you. You need to have uh, 15 boys there to have a match. And that Mir back under a bit of pressure at the scrum. It will reset it. There is no turnover. He feels it wasn't steady. Fine, have you noticed this year that the referees are uh, giving a lot more penalties away during scrum time? Um, I felt like a year or two ago they almost punished the, dom uh, the dominant scrum more than the, than the weak scrum, but it seems like this year there's a bit of a difference in the refereeing of the scrum. I still find it's a lottery. Um, I think there's a lot of guesswork that goes on. I feel the dominant side should win every single time. Personally. And, uh, something as close to your heart as a, as a former front row man yourself. And our penalty here, I think the call is scrumming in. As great tap and go quickly. Find your Asphalt. Charles gains it. Some positive yards. You mule over that ball like a rash. Still is unsuccessful though. And our penalty for off their feet. Has been on the money today so far. 
Tristan Kemp will probe this left hand touch line. That's a nice touch finder. Not much of an angle to work with. He'll be happy with that, uh, that outcome as uh, this Grey Mall, not really, I'd say one out of four chances so far they've converted, Kat? Yes, correct, yeah. Um, the one more was sacked though, decently, but we are contesting this time. A bit of an advantage, he's possibly played the man in the air as they look to go wide, which probably should have been the option a bit earlier. No advantage, yeah. And the Muir backline offside, oh, <laughs> a little bit pedantic, yeah. No real impact on the play. That is something I've noticed about the third time I've seen that blown this year so far. Okay? Yes, it was silly. Like you, you can't make those sort of mistakes against Gray. Like they were under pressure, but there and then you're just letting them off the hook. Um, I didn't like, actually see to, to know if it was the right call, but silly mistake. Oh. Umpteenth lineout attacking opportunity for this Gray side. I'm sure the coaching staff probably a little bit upset now at the lack of uh, execution with all the opportunities they've had so far. 12-0. 14 minutes gone and they've set them all this time breaks off the back still going good work there by Sibu Steedman and this time a penalty to Muir isolated Seema went to ground far too easily and the turnover great work on defence from the Muir Oscar. lovely there by Machola I think that was massively important like if it was a try there I think the game could have gotten away from Muir uh, making a turnover there, just getting back, in, they just need to get into the game a bit, just hold on to the ball a bit. Um, they've only been defending pretty much for the last 15 minutes, so um, they really need to take some pressure off themselves, but not kicking out, that's a big mistake. And they're not really pressing hard here. So, uh, busy. Lots of time and space. Michola, younger brother? The one Michola that played for your first start a couple of years ago? Yeah, Michola played under 16 uh, Bs and he had two years for me, being the top uh, try scorer as a lock for two years for the first team. Uh, unfortunately, not with us anymore. I could have made use of him today, but that's his youngest, uh, younger brother. Yes. Some raw power at, uh, as Nordia makes his presence felt in the field, knocking defenders asunder at will here. And Chukoma, and he slips through a tackle, doesn't Chukoma? Swarbrick finds Van Yossard. Lovely offload in the contact. The tip pass and ever so close to the grey side here. Yawning numbers on the right. Just need to get it through the hands. Oh, and the pass is a poor one. And a chance. Oh, no. Oh, I just need to get here. a foot on that and it could have been interesting. <coughs> Grace keep attacking. Lovely pass from Swarbrick. Finds Kemp. Inside ball. Muir slipping too many tackles at the moment. And Grey ever so close once again within the five metre. Slow ball. They'll pick and go. Advantage accruing. And another try. I'm not sure the try scorer is there. Possibly Blake Parker at, at hooker. Yeah, the actually returner boy is converted to that spot. Playing quite well this year for a, for a new man at number two. Lovely play by Gray there. I just feel like it's a little bit easy for them. Muir not really closing the space and <clears throat> Allowing them just to <coughs> take up the ball too comfortably and making yards. There's no positive hits really, um, but but nice play from Gray. I think that penalty they got, not finding touch, and then no real pressure on the Gray side, allowing a busy to get back into range. The penalty came, and then just a matter of phases before go able to either to try. Yeah, you can't make that mistake, especially after a wonderful turnover from Ahola. Just uh, you should have just released a little bit of pressure there, and then you just with a poor kick put yourself back under pressure. We look at schoolboy rugby, we've both been involved for a long time. It's incredible the focus on the D. Attack is, is probably secondary to defence, and if you're not, the, chick the, the kick chase lines are, are so important. You have to apply pressure, and uh, yeah, perhaps a bit of attitude here that, that, that's required, a bit of a bit of a step up needed from the Murats. If they're going to uh, give a bit of a count of themselves in this, as this game progresses. No, we actually had this conversation the other day that, that the defence has become such a massive part of schoolboy rugby and it's improved schoolboy rugby to an extent where weaker teams can compete against stronger teams because of good defence. It's a fine conversion from Tristan Kemp, taking the score to 19 points. 12 minutes left in this half. That hasn't carried 10. Probably the right choice there from uh, Fortain to just catch the ball and uh, allow the play to stop. 
As I think Gray will probably opt for the scrum on the halfline as the clouds begin to, to gather again. There is rain forecast here uh, after, after 12 o'clock, 90% chance. So we could see a bit more of a shower. Quite glad to see it. it looked like it had set in earlier, Pat, as we arrived. It luckily has cleared. Not too cool. Nice, nice day. Yeah, we've actually been fortunate with the weather so far. If it stays like this, it will be lovely. Uh, I'm obviously not hoping for too much rain, but uh, if it stays like this, it will be a lovely day. Dominant scrum there from the great pack again. They'll have to stop pushing now, and now it becomes a penalty. As you spoke about earlier, the dominant sides are getting rewarded this year by the officials. Yeah, just a mistake there by the flank as well, putting his hands there in the scrum. It's a sizable weight advantage here for the boys uh, in light blue jerseys. It's Kemp uh, has a fairly wobbly touch, out nonetheless. There's almost a sense of inevitability here. Uh, expect me to get some guys in the air. You had to put a bit of pressure on. Yes, I think if, if I had to look back at games where uh, teams were successful against Gray, I think like of Weinberg last year, when they played your first team, is like they put pressure on the, on the thrower. And um, if, if you're going to just uh, try to keep on sacking or, or smashing the, 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 the more, you're not going to be successful the whole day. You've got to put pressure on the hooker. Uh, put pressure on two points. Make sure he's got to throw a good throw. And then after that, they need to more properly, like just allowing them to easily set up a mall. I don't think that's the best way to go. And the bill feed uh, to mistake in the line out. Five's only quite far back here. And again, a big scrum from Gray. And the scrum's lifted behind. An advantage of Gray back line has come up too quickly on defence. Silly stuff from then, the ball wasn't out. I'm sure Mia's not going to ask for the scrum now. What do you think of, of, of them wanting to change the law uh, that you're not allowed to take a free kick into a scrum? Confuses me a little bit. I mean, if, if so, a free kick's awarded for scrum infringement. I just, just deliberately uh, spoil the scrum and then there's a free kick and they can't use it again. It's actually a bit mad. Um, and again, as I, I said to someone earlier today, that you need the scrum to suck people into great space. So it's actually kind of productive as far as I'm concerned. The Wizards of World Rugby. Plus, we always cynically uh, are trying to weaken South Africa. <laughs> Couldn't agree with you more. Four time world champs. <laughs> Living rent free in mines all over the world. <laughs> As Mir will feed this line on the 10 meter. Turned over at the front by Gray. It's far kind of pressure. It's gone possibly gone backwards. And now Dakin takes it. Nice pass to the outside. And space to burn here. Possibly no arms in that tackle. And he's up in the air again. He gets to ground. So, no, turned over. And a chance for Muir to... Crucial run. turnover. They must just consolidate here. Get the ball out. Fortain there with the turnover. Yeah, they're going to run it deep in their half. Breaks a tackle. Well done. Up to the 10 metre. That's great. counter rack viciously and get the, ball, the position back. I think it's Jed Patterson now. Sorry, Gable Glenny. He's isolated and another turnover for Muir. Grant was perhaps a little bit uh, guilty. Sorry, Jean Nell there. Guilty of becoming isolated uh, when they're breaking, breaking the first tackle. Fantastic counter, counter racking from Gray. Um, fortunately for Muir, we got a feisty little nine that doesn't mind getting his head into the ruck, so he made a good turnover there. So 19 nil it is, as we get down into the last eight minutes of this uh, first half here on the Ellis Field, named for headmaster Paul Ellis, who was the first headmaster after the school moved up to the new campus in 1987. And that's been lost forward, messy work there. And I'll be disappointed with that outcome there, Chad. Yeah, just a poor picking up, and uh, I don't think it was the worst of throws, but to try to get two hands to the to to uh, to the catch and. Um, it's, it's, it's a place where Muir is struggling at the moment. We're not getting our scrum ball or line-out ball, and it makes it difficult. I, I think line-out balls are one of the most important facets of the game. If you can't kick the ball out and after a penalty and return your ball, um, you're going to be in trouble. So, unfortunately, Muir is struggling in the tight phases at the moment. Yeah, Sawbrick, quite a tall lad for a scrum off. Bit of a great spurt in, in recent months. I didn't recognise him when I saw him off the holiday. And another dominant scrum from Gray as Kemp. The flat ball to Mbizi. 
Now we'll get his hands free offloads. Around the corner they go. And off to the races of the Grey Boys. Oh, and he's lost it forward. That's Kemp ended up all the way on the wing there. Showing his speed and unable to hold the pass. Good tackle there by Mahola, the inside, uh, the outside centre, but again he came in creating space on the outside. And they've been doing that all day, unfortunately. 12 and 30, not really working well together and trusting each other and being to be disconnected, leaving space on the outside every time for Gray. So you often see the, the style of coaching depending on where the coach is played. And a lot of Matt uh, Tallis was players a player <laughs> very reminiscent here, the loop arounds and looking to exploit the space in, on the outside. There's a better scrum from Muir this time. I'm going to look to set it in the midfield. Risky stuff right way beyond the advantage line. Very isolated. And that's a bit of a Hail Mary pass. Gone to no one. Now finding the hands of the right winger here. Sauli. Cuts back inside. Well tackled. As Gray attacked that ruck and the Jacklers get hands on. Turn over ball. Good tackle there from Justice Msukacha. Do you think it's a pressure that's forcing Mia not to set up phases and just trying to throw the ball around, trying, hoping for a miracle? Well, school boards often speaks to personalities, and obviously your stronger personalities are the centres. They want the ball. Probably have a reason the call. I'd be trying to go downtown here. Not much of a wind uh, into their faces. So, but anyhow, happy to play in their own half. As a Parker has that success, he's lost two lineouts. Kwesi Mafungosi going for the sack there. Um, the number three, I thought he had an excellent game so far. Struggling in the scrums, but um, he's been all over the park, making a few big hits and turnovers. So, Kat, I'm off to commentate uh, the Kings in SVD. Oh, sorry, EP Elephants, I keep saying the Kings. And a couple of Murats on that side. Uh, uh, is it uh, uh, Tikole? Was in the first half of 2017? Yes, he's uh, Tole. Um, he used to play inside centre. I think he's SA Schools also for two years, or SA Academy, one of the two, I can't remember. But he was my inside centre back in 2017. So he's on the bench for, for Eastern Province as well as uh, one of, I think, DeForce is the surname who's going to be playing fly off. Ruben DeForce, um, he was here before my time. I coached against him when I was at Union, and he almost won the game for me against us. Uh, brilliant foot. Um, he played fullback back then, but then after school he moved to fly off. And then a couple of grey boys as well, Harrod High Salmon and, uh, and uh, Aya Ulifant for the Kings. And uh, one Damon Royal, who's the co-captain of the EP side, has moved from the Sharks down to, to George. So, actually looking forward to uh, seeing him play. I see I play, play at the Wolf, Wolfgang uh, Stadium, like um, not playing at EP Stadium anymore. Is it just not cost effective to play there? As far as I understand, there's security checks, etc. the day before. And hellishly expensive, you're looking at about 100,000 Rand, so I think it's a cost-saving measure. So the Wolfson entry is free if you're keen to watch the... Your, your local side. Uh, promise it'll be an exciting game. Mid table clash, fifth and sixth place. So uh, we'll look and see how that goes. By the way, good to see boys from this province. I mean, a couple of boys from Don Aquino and Brunfuck as well. I think both centres in the in the uh, EP side are both old Brunfuck boys. So nice to see, and a couple of Don Aquino lads as well. So nice to see local guys getting a chance. Yeah, and he's like representing him. It's good. The matches going on marvellous this Muir campus, a lot of space. All four fields are games on here. High school uh, Muir and Gray playing, and then the primary Muir primary playing against Sunridge from uh, Port Elizabeth from, from Kubecha. So a full day of rugby here, boys all the way from grade four up to grade twelve involved. It's lovely seeing the kids playing some sport. She really appreciate this after the two years of COVID where we had no school sport. And again, it's on the boot this time. Hanging kick in the middle. But well cap well covered there by Nyandora. And he's got some gas. Slung to the ground, bounces back onto his feet as he wasn't held. Still going. That's a great carry, all of 30 meters. Mia yeah, defending a bit narrow, yeah, lots of space out wide. Great looking to use. When he also leaves the ball behind, has gone backwards. Great hands from Kemp. Finds him beat. Almost too much time there for Beats and Chukoma. Through the hands they go. And Mbizi. Around the outside he goes. Probably the pick of the tries they've scored in the first half. Some lovely handling and interplay there between the forwards of the ground at 16As. Yeah, unfortunately, Richard kicking the ball there, not the worst option, I think, but if you make those sort of kicks, your chasing needs to be better and you've got to put the man down there. Once he broke through that line, Mia was always under pressure, falling back to defend, but great try by Gray.
Uh, these boys will play provincial trials on Tuesday. I really feel the first round should happen in the preseason, uh, Mr. Gonzalez. It would make a lot more sense to me. I can't agree with you anymore. If we look at the schedule ahead, um, uh, with your festival also coming up uh, in early May, the boys are going to play about six, seven to eight matches in um, a question of five, six weeks. I mean, that's a lot of injuries happen this time of the year. Um, so I agree with you 100%. All right, so the conversion is successful. 26 to 0. I think a fair reflection uh, of this first half game. Your side, unfortunately, not getting in the right part of the field so far. And Gray have had four opportunities and scored four tries. Uh, don't get it, we'll be back in a moment or two.
Romano reaches starting off the game. Second half underway, we are trailing 26 0. Ah, oh, much better defence there by Mia, stopping Gray on the gain line. Little pick up and drive there by Gray. Nice exit from Gray Nine. Yeah, I feel there's the best boots of any scrum off in the school. There's uh, Ryan Sorbrick. It's funny how the, the change in age groups. He might have been playing slightly higher up uh, if there weren't. Uh, these age groups as we do now have 16s not separated from the 19s. Yeah, good box kick, so it's a lovely weapon to have. Um, takes a lot of pressure off your fly off. I look at a guy like Linton Kroos is on your staff who played close on 80 first team matches. Oh, that's actually team. incredible, eh? Bit of a mess there, but a knocked on at the front. The great contest really good, unable to grab the ball scrum, but it's on the right part of the field. Not the worst outcome for them. There were matches all over South Africa today. Rugby season in full swing. Lovely seeing the boys out here. Lots of parents, lots of excitement. The vendors are quite quiet today. I'm not smelling much burro today. today. Actually looking for a burro roll just now. They are apparently. Um, they should be. Kwesima from Gorsi taking up the ball nicely there. Captain of the Muir side. Uh, it's only quite deep here, the fly off. And they're trying to play again in their half. The long cutout pass has gone to no one. And that's a very, very negative outcome there, Chet. Uh, offered some good possession from that set piece. Yeah, Mia fly off a little bit deep, not running onto the ball, but also probably not the right thing to do there. Um, I think there was a little bit of space at the back here. Try and put it over. You had a nice line set there to put a bit of pressure on Gray, but um, rather going to run the ball out. See Coach Ely looking very chill there behind the poles. Not too flustered, not pulling his head out or throwing his cap down. Not yet. <laughs> Give it time. <laughs> 26-0 there, two minutes into the second half. Mr. Fritz may not actually the head coach of this team at the moment. He comes from Grey Bloom. Lovely addition to the staff. Very knowledgeable rugby guy. How's it going, Rick? Down the short shot, they go through Poyo. Romano Richard going for the cross kick. This could be dangerous. Great tackle by Kwesima from Gorsi. And Saiz picking up the ball. Um, knock on by Saiz, unfortunately. Um, giving a middle scrum to Mia College. Very good outcome there for Mia. Good tackle by um, Mahola. Unfortunately, Saiz not being able to hold on to the ball, but scrum Mia ball in the middle of the field. Have a perspective here on top of the bank looking down onto the Ellis field. That width of this field, have you narrowed it a bit? I remember running around here a few times, almost 80 meters wide it was at one stage. The biggest pro yeah, we, we actually went uh, on the internet and watched the, ma the maximum size for a first team rugby field, and this field was too big. Um, so we narrowed it down to the maximum length, uh, width of 70 meters. So I remember playing a game or two as a primary school boy, and it felt like you were. Running for days, and that's all. Oh, been knocked on. Good pressure here. A chance here for the Murat. So Sais gets hands on. Offload is he's still going? A bit of advantage to the knock on, and that's a, the right part of the field. Finally playing the situation better, Kat. Yeah, lovely to see Mia holding on to the ball a bit and actually taking the great. Definitely coming out with a bit more um, attitude, the Mia side. The defense has definitely been better, and a bit more aggression too from the guys. It's nice to see. It's not a bad side, this. Um, Obviously, not quite the same quality as the grey side, but it's, uh, for me, a college is a decent side, and we'd like them to, to, to grow throughout the season. Or is the school that's punched above its weight? A few number of professional players that have come through the ranks, yeah? Way back for, for a spring back, but uh, last national, Shane Gates, a few years ago for Japan. I yeah, guy was very hard done by as a matric poly, should have been in their school's ranks. Jason Thomas was that year, one of his teammates. Go. So, well, it's a huge tackle. Unbelievable defence there. Pick and go. It's out here, Muffin Gorsi, the captain. 
Mona reaches a little bit deep. Oh. Turned over, knocked on there. It's a bit of a coach killer, that. Let's go, we got a chance to clear their lines. That's why we go. No protection there and a penalty for offsides. Whatever you're going to say from the, from the defender. No, hands in the ruck is the call. Yeah, unfortunately them. Yeah, looked nice with how it looked good with ball in hand and then just an uh, unforced error, unfortunately. Kemp and the umpteenth time this game will be a great line out. Such an important facet of, of, of modern play, particularly at schoolboy level. Because you can't push more than one and a half meters, so the best way to gain physical ascendancy is with a line out drive. The overthrow, a bit of a variation as, as Nordier into the vacuum, the big boy. And possibly he should have backed himself, looked to offload, so he's scragged. Oh, and been knocked on. Marvellous bit of play there, a bit of a variation, Gert. Yeah, lovely play. Excellent throw there from your hooker. Pinpoint to the back of the line and just running straight into the vacuum. Strong boy, got a bit of pace. I think he should have actually backed himself and he might have gotten over the line. And selfish to his own uh, detriment there. He's been a standout today. Big unit. And I think a boy, when we're looking at these provincial sides, I'll be very surprised if he doesn't wear red and black in the June holidays. Of course, meaning Eastern Province folks. Yeah, definitely someone to keep an eye on. You know, while we wait for the scrum, it's lovely to see so many great parents out here yeah? uh, to come out and to support their school. And it's lovely hosting you guys. It's lovely to see. I can't remember when last we had so many people at one of our derbies. Um, Siphon always at almost a fever pitch level for the season. Uh, a lot of folk travel down to Cape Town as well, but uh, the enthusiasm and the culture of the sport is strong and uh, folk want to support their sons, which is always marvellous. Had a big crowd. We had a warm-up against Great College in Somerset East uh, about a month ago and uh, the travelling numbers, they were thrilled. Somerset East, they made a record turnover at the touch shop that afternoon. Something we'd like to repeat in the future is that ball has been well sacked again, but Gray get over the speed bump and keep going through the same channel. It's gone to ground under its own way. It's a Swabrick. Finds a lovely tip pass to Nordier again. Breaks the first tackle. But, but do you know, no, Dakin, with tremendous attention around him, fights to ground. Gray's on the right part of the field. The ball's a bit slow. And a penalty here, and now someone's in trouble. I think repeat infringements by the Murats at the breakdown. Is that number two being sent to the bin there? Aya uh, FIFA? Is it Fiver? Apologies the pronunciations, folks. I think it's FIFA. Not a soccer player, though. Is that ball's gone over the wall. Someone's going to go fetch it. Over the fence, apologies. The garden town they used to call Utnag was its moniker for years and years. Lovely view up from the top of the hill here. So Thomas Muir Drive. As I contested, Gray set them all. And there's a sense of inevitability about this one as they rumble closer and closer to the line and a try. Decent Chakoma. Oh, sorry, it might be Blake Park who dots down. I'm rather far from the field here, folks. Apologies if I get it wrong. Am I right to say, Finna, that's the first half of this, uh, the first try of this half. Um, great more there by Gray. Um, actually, I, I, I thought Mia actually defended the more pretty well up to now. Um, but good try there by Gray. I think the number down has made a difference. It's a tough 31 to nil. Tough conversion for Kemp right on the, it's right on the touchline. Must just be grateful it's not 77 meters anymore in width. <laughs> Actually, uh, thinking back to a match uh, for a 39 game, we yeah, won, the, won the match with a conversion from the touchline, which astounded folk that even could kick it that far. Yeah, that's incredible because I saw that in a 14 struggle to get the good balls to the poles um, because it is a rather big field. Boy, his name was Spielman. I can't remember his first name, it's a long time ago.
It's a good strike from Kemp. And it's over. Great kick from Tristan Kemp. Incredible. Four to five for him so far today. 33 to nil. 20 minutes ago in this half. And some chat to the inner side. Taking the time a bit now. No games. I think a bit of motivation from, from the captain. We had some points here. They've had a few opportunities. Haven't converted yet. Probably one real outright chance deep in, in, in Gray's half. Pat, your next match next week? Next week is our, is our first match of the year against Brandwach. We're playing them twice a year now, but uh, we're playing at Brandwach next week, and then the week after that is Pearson, and then we're hosting you and I here again, and then I think it's your festival. It doesn't stop for the next uh, eight weeks. We're really not busy. Commits three or four, very powerful, fairly short, but very powerful lad. Commits three or four defenders. You see a loose forward in his great actually shifted to uh, the centres by Dave Bolsey, his 15 coach last year. And that kick has found grass. That's a terrible mistake here by the Muir fullback. Another under pressure. That's well covered there by number nine, Lyle Davids. Mia must be very tough to get away there with a the penalty. Great work by Davids there. Um, ball bouncing in his favour and he's scooping it up and securing it for Muir. That's uh, this field is really hard. You don't want the ball to bounce because it really does bounce high. Yeah, if I can give any advice to someone, don't let the ball bounce in the mirror field. Not when it's this colour. So Ramona Richards finds a fairly solid touch. This mirror pack has battled manfully today. They've been battered and bruised by the larger boys from Kabecha. To the front they go uncontested off the top. Some time and space here. It's kicking a bit of space. The chase is quite a good one. It's great out to bounce. The same mistake being made by the other side. As Andorra's got his hands past that ruck. It's a penalty. Never attempted to win the ball, just slowed it down. Again, Lyle David's picking up the loose ball there. That was a nifty kick. First time we seeing Richards, a lot of lateral play in the first half deep in his half, and showing he's got a useful boot that found the space there. Hesitation from the fullback and forced the turnover. Yeah, he's a very nice player. Like, uh, I mean, we, we respect Gray as a school tremendously. And I, I said to the boys, sometimes you're respecting them too much. Um, they almost lose the game before the time. And I just get the feeling that the boys are growing into the game as the game is going along and Richard finding his feet. A touch miss and then Gray pumps it downfield. And we have the chance to exploit some space. Is that that's a Mahola. And the pass, unfortunately, is forward. Dominating the much smaller boy there. Lyle Davis getting tossed to the ground but back on his feet quite quickly. 33 0, 17 minutes to go, and it would have been quite an enjoyable flash here, but in a good spirit. And Mark and the producer earlier, not a single card today, which is very, very nice to see, particularly with the variations in the, in the tackle law. Now let's hope it stays that way. So a couple of ridiculous cards in Cape Town a few weeks ago on tour, where Ronda Bosch boy got a red card for absolutely nothing at all. A pretty legitimate tackle in any, even in the new laws, which spoiled the game. The second team against Rondebosch, a very nice. And have you seen many pen penalties for dipping below he a hip height? Or, um... Surprisingly not. Okay. I, I felt a few times it probably should be, and they haven't been blown. As Greg goes through the hands here to the outside. Space to move. That's a very good carry from Grey High School. We're a bit isolated now as he gets to ground. Sawbrick. Muir defending a little bit narrowly, leaving a bit of space out wide. And six points seems to be out of position there on the offside. The ref not picking it up. Chukoma out the back. Great hands. Take it. Still going is the abrasive flanker. Crosses into the 22. Sawbrick off the back. Pops a little pass to Mbizi. Mbizi! And that's probably the moment in the match for me so far there. That little deft little offload. Out the backhand from Sawbrick. He was in a lot of pressure. Finds him busy for his second. That's great. Take that lead to 38 points to nil. You see this on the replay here. Sawbrick spins, pops it out the back of the hand, and then a busy with two defenders to beat. One hand off, two hand off. Under the poles he goes. Seems Gray speeding up the ball a bit from the rucks. Uh, we're starting a little bit tired here. You can only make tackles for so long in a game. 
done some good work. He's really been the standout here today for me and Beasy and uh, Nordea, probably been the two best in the field. As Kemp adds his uh, sixth conversion, 40 points to nil, 15 minutes to go. Pretty nice crowd being been into balls here next to this field. Next up uh, will be the Reds of Grey. The third team will be playing against some your seconds. The Blues not playing this weekend. Walking back to the off line a bit slowly this time here into the last quarter of this game. And so it's a time of match catch with the paint can really piles on if you've got your intensity. The sides have to stick to their guns here. They haven't given a bad account of themselves so far. They're only going to leak four or five tries now and now this become a rout. Yeah, I think this little uh, 15 minute period is going to show a lot about the character of this team and let's hope they come out fighting. When you also through the middle, he goes. Oh, and they can't hold in the pass. That's what we were talking about there, falling off the tackle. And also it's a big tall boy, he's generous on the speed, got through the first tackle and he was in space. Just couldn't link the, 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 the off-road on the outside. Yeah, Mir just coming off the line a bit slowly, allowing Gray to run onto them. Um, I always feel when you play a team of this calibre, you've got to press hard and close the space as soon as possible, especially if the players are much bigger than you. I'm feeling not sure if some chirping or something there, but if it, uh, the arm went out, the boys are coming together for the set piece. A bit of yeah. discipline there for the grey. There's a mistouch again. Well taken. Oh, no, Kemp, unfortunately, tried really hard to keep it in play, but he steps, in, steps onto the touchline, so Muir yeah, will get their line out after all. Shane Romano's heart was in his mouth there for a little bit. We draw beginning to start next to us, yeah, and some of the assembled murats. Themselves in fine voice today, we'll be sure we'll hear them during the first team match. And that's turned over the front, Sawbrick has got a pressure to deal with. That's Muir attempted to shut that ball, but the ball goes out to Ferrer, to Nordia, who pumps one, two off. Route one, a couple of hard yards, and really well in that carry, Sawbrick. And also a tip pass, when he's intercepted here. Just look at the difference when Quezzi there came off the line and made a big hit. That's it. Just putting the touch line and they've gone into touch there, fortunately. It's just those little things there, breaking through, making a nice tackle, getting the ball and then just throwing it backwards 10 metres and putting yourself under pressure again. Maybe just hold on to the ball there. I know he was isolated a bit, but it just seemed like an, an important moment where not staying calm. So a lot of movement here in this lineup for Gray. Uncontested. Oh, he's lost it backwards. Ref said the ball has gone backwards. Sawbrick with a nice pass. Links with Wistazen and Beasy. All flows in contact. Finds Dakin, who's well tackled. Does well to. Make it a neutral one. Great clean out there from Gray. Great clean out. Sorbrick with a lot of time. He'll get some height on this kick. It's a good one and it's going to bounce. That's anyone's ball. Well, Clejo gets it in the air. Well done. And Gray with no defence on the outside. If they can get through the hands, it'll be a try. Just as it finds justice on the outside. Runners are plenty, options all over. The tip pass is not a good one though, it's gone to ground. Unfortunately knocked on by Muir, so advantage to Gray here. The ref hasn't seen it. Play to the whistle. Oh, Muir getting away with one there. But good play by Muir, we got off the line. Made a good tackle and getting the ball back. First there, I think the referee's had a good game here today. I'm not sure his name, Kurt, but he's been probably pretty much on the money all day long. You can only blow what you see there, about seven out bodies between him and that knock-on. Yeah, he refs a few games for us, very decent ref, um, um, and he had a good game. Yeah, that was the first thing he possibly missed today, and it is understandable. So the option here, it looks like the Fife is sitting in the midfield, maybe they're going to try and, and run again. The coach and me want to see that go into a foot down the right-hand touchline. Yeah, or, or at worst, 8, 9, 14 and 14 kicking the ball downfield. But I don't think Mia will get the right shoulder. <laughs> There's a pick up at the back there. There's a good one by Poyo. He's gained about 15 metres. And now pressure on 
on the Murat. So now on the foot it goes from Mamona Richards. And then Neondora let it bounce. Coming back inside across his poles. It's not too bad in this context as Muir attempt to the turnover, not successful. Strawberry got lots of time on the short side again. And Beasy. Want to give that guy space. Shrugs off the first defender. Beasy not the biggest player, but it seems like a strong boy, eh? Nice. It's a block of human being. Incredibly powerful. And great advantage here. Muir offsides at that last ruck. Now no deal with the head of steam. A lot of involvement for a tight head. Work rate is really, really good for a tight head front, uh, tight head prop, Sawbrick. And again, off they go. And that's a lovely try. Great work by Van Yossel, the eighth man. Hard at that line and eventually the dam will broke. 45 to nil. And I'm sure the two-pointer will be an easy one here for Tristan Kemp. No, Diem is definitely not playing like a prop, uh, Bennett. He's been all over the park and he's probably made about 10 carries almost so far today. That's funny, Oswald there just shrugging off that last line of defence. Uh, really poor tackle by Doe's. I don't think he really wanted a piece of that big eight running at him at, at, at a, with a full head of steam. Charles no dear. Really shot some exceptional play from him as a conversion is a good one. Easy as you like from Tristan Kemp. As we slide into the last 10 minutes of what has been a been entertaining rugby match here today between the 16 sides of High School and, and Muir College. Yeah, I must say the second half, some nice intensity showed by some of the Muir players. I just feel like it's not all 15 of them really putting their bodies on the line. Uh, but I feel there's a lot of Muir boys that can go home today feeling proud of the way they played and how they kept on fighting. Um, especially uh, for me, Kwezi Muffin Gorsi, tight and prop. Has had a lovely game so far. Maybe struggled in the scrums, but which is understandable. Gray's got a very good scrum. Oh, big brother, small brother here to, to an extent today with the numbers battle. And your side has really been gallant, second to none. You're never going to give up. It's a pretty deep kick off water contest. Well done by, by Jean Nell, who. Takes a little bit of pressure, gets a positive carry. Swarbrick. A lot of time, gets a bit of height on that kick. Oh, number 11 there. Desmond Pietrus. He's left Let's a few go. today. Now, this could be a try here. Greg can get it through the hands. Throwing little backflips. Oh, dear. Again. He deserves a try, does the big boy. And he's over. Hats off. What more do you want to see, uh, Fenner, than a tight head taking the ball out wide and cutting back in under the poles? If they say he'll carry, he'll lift, he'll scrum, he'll mow the lawn and drive the bus. Great job you have from Daniel Odea today. He's been looking for that try for the last 20 minutes and finally he got an opportunity and he's made it count. Definitely deserved one. No, that's a bit of that's a test of courage here for the Murats. You've uh, been comprehensive eaten, you don't get a, an absolute smack. So they're going to have to really dig deep and make sure they make their hits in the next few minutes. Yeah, Gray has started to identify that uh, we are struggling under the high ball at the back and they're busy talking it, talk, targeting it in a late second half and it's worked well for them. A 52 to nil. The scoreboard hasn't moved a little bit slowly on the far side. I think the scoreboard operator is a little bit bored there. Yeah. So back. We're also coming back slowly to the half line. There's an air of reluctance in their in their body language. But the self chat has remained positive for the boys. It's just a game of rugby. And again, we'll, we'll take in there by Klecho. Sawbrick has had a solid performance today. And he also pick, takes it close. Fall in the wrong way, turn over as possible. Just didn't snaffle the ball. As he balls the wall, does Sawbrick. 
Got a lot of pressure from these box kicks all day. As Mbizi chases as hard as he can. But there's time and space for the Mirats. Straight down the middle of the field. Terrible kick. And there goes Van Jarsfeld again through the middle. Still going. Another boy that should be within the shots of provincial colours this year. Sorbrick to the left. Numbers are plenty. Pass doesn't find anyone. Picked up by Westhuizen. Still going. Playing the right part of the field. Five minutes to go. 52 to nil. Sorry, 54 to nil. And Frost got all that one. Bring a very tight line, but no advantage for sides. Kind of viciously flat there, trying to catch that ball. For the Archfeld to now run very nice lines, eh, off nine. Uh, they've been taking some very good carries at pace, causing lots of trouble from here. A bit of a Damien Willemse calling for the scrum here. This is the great side, showing a bit of faith in the, in the, the fact they have had almost total dominance so far today. They haven't been challenged by the Mirat, so pretty good platform for the back line to, uh, to run something. You can see a bit of an arrowhead formation here. Runners both sides of the fly half. Busy, nice and flat too. Very busy to take this as a first receiver and be looped by the fly half. Then Busy goes straight and hard to the line. And Noah's in a tackle in here by the looks of things. Still going. That's a bit soft there. Disappointing defensive effort from the Murats, but some easy grabs his hat trick. Now the scoreline's getting a bit ugly here, Kat. Yeah, Mia's defense very poor there. No one, no one pressing off the line, closing down the space, and uh, it didn't allow Gray to do their move. Uh, I guess that's the only positive Mia can say. <laughs> Because I didn't think Mbizi was supposed to score there. I think he was supposed to set it up and then go wide from there. Oh, he likes to try though. A bit selfish at times, but he did the work. Kemp has had a good day with the boot. He's only missed one kick all day long. And that is 61-0. Eight and nine kicks for Tristan Kemp so far. Is that the call there from the coach? Slow it down, guys. Not rushing back three minutes ago. Okay, so has been very impressive today. They've really nine tries. They've had about 11 opportunities and they've executed almost every single time. Some great play. Nell for the asphalt and Nordia in the back of forwards have really carried with venom. They're rather impressive. And then uh, in the back line, Beasy and Kemp have also done their reputations. No harm at all. And as you mentioned, him, no, Beasy breaks the first tackle again. Incredibly powerful is the outside centre. Although there's a possibility of a turnover here from here. As they flood the ruck. Can't get hands on. Chukoma. Sorry, that was Steedman. The guys lining up to, to carry the ball as Muir attack the breakdown. Funny Oswald does the, the hard work, sets it up. Kemp stabs through for himself here. Oh, and a T. He gets hands on. All floats to the inside. Intercepted. And he's setting off. Oh, that's a dreadful kick. Still going, offloads. Through the hands it has to go here. And Dakin will get his first try of the game. Just got a feel for the defender there. Massive panic and the kick was a poor one. Yeah, I don't know what to say about that, but like um, great finishing off well at the end. Good defence there by Muir, make, uh, creating the turnover. Uh, number 18, I'm not sure what his name is, got the ball um, and then just lost his cool a bit. Unfortunately, kicking the ball straight to the middle, putting all the Mir boys offside. Kemp. He's had a great uh, 
uh, the beauty this might be full time as the as the grey boys gather on the half line. They're just going to call it quits here. As the clock runs down to naught. Oh, and it's upright. And that uh, caps what has been a very impressive performance from this ground at 16A side, Pat. No, excellent performance by the grey team. Some good moments for the Mio boys. Unfortunately, not finishing off the game too strongly, but they deserve it when it's grey. Played some excellent rugby. Nice back of forwards, finished off by some quick backs. Lovely to see. Typical great schoolboy rugby. Right, that's all from us for this game, folks. Don't go too far away. It's a grey, or the Muir's second team against the grey thirds in a few minutes. Join us in a few minutes. Thank you.
Yes. Okay, use that mic, please. Sir. There's a mere guy coming. I'm not sure if somebody else is here. Are you from Gray? Yeah. Do you remember every uh, try on doing action replay for a, a slow mo? Not yet. Uh, not in this field anyway. I think they scored one or two there, but. Uh, yeah. But then again, I didn't see one yellow card yet yeah, no. today, so that's good. Good, yeah. This has been good. The games have actually been nice games to watch and to Yeah. Last time when I streamed for DP, there was like two cards. I can imagine. On the side, one on the other side. Somebody to go buy some food and <laughs> get away with. What up, all right? Welcome once again here to the Ellis Field at Muir College. Currently waiting for the next game to begin, the Grey High School 
third team, more commonly known as the Reds, uh, playing from left to right here on the field uh, in their uh, traditional azure blue kit and uh, Muir College seconds in traditional navy stripes with the turquoise in the middle. Currently ball in hand, Johan Kutsia to kick off from left to right. And that's a, a good start for Gray, just managing to get that to land just inside the 22. And uh, early opportunity here for Muir to set phases and begin to work themselves into the game. We all have the feed to this line-out. No numbers on jerseys and uh, no team sheet, so forgive me for not knowing names this morning. But Muir with the uh, five-man line-out to start just inside their 22. Carry up in the midfield. Match in the physicality and the numbers flood this rack. Ball goes back. That's taken back into the 22. So can't go direct. Uh, Mark and Domingo under the ball on the left-hand side. Quick feet, but uh, managed caught in the tackle as he sets this wide rack. Loose ball. And Lebango Foster, the tight head prop for this great third team. Stain offloading Adam Ferry with a major carry down the midfield. Stain now looking for quick ball again. Johan Kutsia on the ball. Short ball there. Pumi Maguaza with a big carry again. Gray managing to put together some phases now. Loose ball. Stain recovers. Ooh, could be a high hit there. Head in contact. Advantage has been shown. Ball is available though for Gray and they'll try and make use of this advantage. Cody Wilmot on the ball in the midfield. First carry for the number two. And their penalty does come for that high tackle on uh, Brandon Stain earlier on in the play. Gray managing to put together some uh, good number of phases there and good continuity for them. They'll be happy with this early start, but uh, good defence by Muir College. And now, opportunity for Gray set piece. Seven or eight metres out. Cody Wilmot has the first opportunity for him to feed into this line out. The call comes from uh, Lebango Foster at the front. Be interesting to see the options here. For numbers in, could possibly be a mall. Adam Faree could be skew and is. And uh, easy let off there for Muir College. And they'll have a put in to a scrum just off their five meter. the feed. Front ball competed but uh, Muir College do well and they'll set this part off. Good inside tap off and phases set for them and I'm sure they'll be looking to exit here. This exit does go downfield and uh, not out. Johan Kutsia does not clean that up very well. Scrappy ball and uh, Muir College have done well to get the ball back as uh, the physicality is matched in the midfield and uh, Managed to set a ruck. Messy ball and uh, playing the nine is the call and they'll look to quick tap but uh, not made use of so they'll have to reset that penalty. And now looking to play in the right areas of the field. New College will take opportunity looking for touch here. Not out by him. Adam Faree with a major carry down the right-hand side, but Muir over the ball, and uh, rightfully so, penalty comes as uh, Adam Faree finds himself isolated. <laughs> and, uh, hugging the touchline here. Tight angle for the kicker for Muir. He will look to find touch. This time he does just that, and uh, just inside their own half, Muir, another line out for them. First one, five man, and once again they set the same.
Front ball, same option, not taken cleanly, and uh, Cody Wilmot tries to get hands on the ball. Ref says knock backwards, but I'm not sure that's the case as Lennon cleans up and gets a good leg drive on and sets the pot in the midfield. Stain again behind the back, could see a long pass over the heads, but uh, looks like Coda Lamoud with the first opportunity on the ball there carrying. Stain again, Adam Faree has been abrasive in the carry, major contact once again. Stain looking for ball, has to go digging for it, could see a to boot with a cross kick, but unable to find a great man as Muir clean up just inside their 22. Big carry, lots of missed tackles happening here as they set their first rack, their first ruck. Attacking the short side now. Good hands as uh, managed to find a little bit of space on the left hand side, beating Ryan Wicks and eventually taken into touch by Brandon Stain, the number nine for Gray High School, third team here. Now Cody an opportunity to rectify for that early mistake for him as he feeds his second line out of the day. Fake dummy in the front and uh, Adam Freed manages to get his hands on, not cleanly, but Dirk Null manages to clean up for him. Tackler not rolling there, could find himself in trouble and does, not rolling away the call and the penalty goes the way of Gray High School and I'm sure they'll be looking for touch and just to push themselves further downfield into uh, the Muir Red Zone. much distance on that kick but uh, all meters count <laughs> Cody Wilmot getting instructions from Brandon staying there I'm sure Bax will be looking for an opportunity to play some ball Middle ball, Adam Ferry takes good setup, and uh, but uh, excellent sack by Muir College, managing to disrupt the early set on that mall. Stain Stain again now. Lubango Foster offload to Adam Ferry, carrying good leg drive, beat one or two. Now there's opportunities out wide if Gray can use this, but uh, messy ball. Could see a Wicks show and go by the big man there inside center. He's taken down eventually. Staying once again. Jared Lennon. Opportunity for him early on here to make a good carry. Staying. Adam Farig once again asking for the ball. But this time stopped clearly in his tracks. Staying behind the back. Could see David Melleriri. Good opportunity for him now. The number 13. First time he's got an opportunity to carry. Staying again. Slow ball. Haven't seen much from the great back line yet. But uh, defense has been outstanding from your college so far, fronting up in all areas. Another penalty goes the way of Gray High School here. Tackling not releasing the call. As Johan could see a head boy, Gray High School this year. Excellent leader, excellent man, top academic and uh, very pr promising tennis player playing for SA Schools as well. Starting here at number 10, has prodded that out into touch and uh, Gray have a line out about 10 meters out. John Els takes that cleanly and uh, Riffs uh, hasn't seen that detachment. No, he has. That is the c exactly the case and uh, Good referee in there, catches that infringement and, uh, and again a get out of jail free card from your college. As Gray looking to set that more early to get good go for ball with the use of their forward pack. Nipo Williams on this uh, right hand touchline doing all sorts of acrobatics to try and keep that ball in play but uh, to no avail. Put in now for Muir. Back ball, good line out. Is a, a big carry from the inside centre. 
but uh, unable to hold on to that as he gets met in contact by Cody Wilmot. And, uh, Gray will have an opportunity now with a reasonably sized blind on this right-hand side of the field. Possible opportunities available to them if they could be clever. Nipo Williams will be frothing on this right-hand side to get hands on the ball. One of the top 400 meter athletes in the province and uh, hasn't had an opportunity to get his hands onto a debt. Staying a put in on the 10 meter. Ref's just taking control of that uh, scrum early, making sure the uh, players understand exactly what's expected of them now as he gives them a bit of a talking to. Safety first always to uh, scrum time. So the reset comes. Stain puts in. Off the back it goes. Wicks carries. Bounces one, bounces two, manages to look for an offload. Stain collects again. Wild pass out the back. Code Lamoud moving into fullback from 10 this way. Manages to get Marco and Domingo onto the ball on that left hand wing. And he does well to set up a wide ruck and cleans, does Code Lamoud. Stain plays Jared Lennon. An opportunity again for him to exert his physical presence onto the field, but hold up in contact as uh, Gray have to put men into the ruck. That's uh, a maul now. Muir don't have to release if they can't use it. Uh, Gray will be penalised here. Manages to get the ball to ground somehow as uh, Kutsia shows and goes himself, found some space in that midfield and uh, looks to offload inside, but uh, ball goes to ground and space open, opening up in the midfield there for uh, Johan Kutsia, just uh, unable to make use of it himself. But uh, once again, promising signs for Gray as they manage to get hands on the ball, but uh, Muir College defense been resolute at every opportunity. <laughs> 12 minutes in, still nil nil. Gray will be ruining missed opportunities here. As Muir College have uh, put into their own scrum inside their 22. This is a third reset to the day already at scrum time. Both packs seem to be setting very, very high. And uh, possibly the cause for some of these resets. Both packs need to lower in the front row there and just to provide a bit of stability. put in will come. Gray managed to turn this over. Legally, it seems, Brandon Stain comes in. Johan Kutsia has got his hands on the ball. Ryan Wicks, David Milleriri. There's space here if David can get this pass away. Beats one, beats two, and is going to go over for the first try of the day in this right-hand corner. David Milleriri, the big number 13 center. And here comes the replay in slow motion, as you'll see. Stain, a little bit of a dirty offload pass there, but Kutsia does well. Wicks draws and passes to David, who beats with ease the first defender. Brushes off the second and over the whitewash to put first points of the day for Gray High School. 5-0 up with 16 minutes still left to play in this first half as Johan Kutsia Lines up his first kick of the day. Tough one on the angle here for the right hand, right footed kicker. <coughs> Good strike, but uh, unfortunately just pushed to the right in that case so the score remains 5-0 but uh, 
took a bit of time to break down the Muir College defence there for Gray High School. Um, and it was uh, against the run of play with uh, Gray managing to turn over that uh, scrum and make use of that uh, early counter-attacking opportunity. Take some time to find a ball there, but uh, the kickoff does come now. Hack downfield onto grass as Jared Lennon, the number four lock for Gray High School's third team here, carries up in the midfield as they look to set a wall and exit in these areas. Johan Kutsia takes a scrappy pass and uh, manages to do well and find his team 20, 30 metres up the field and uh, put him just off the halfway line with uh, a Muir line out and that will ease, uh, ease the pressure of that kickoff. It's uh, always a vital 60 seconds after scoring points just to make sure you get out and allow, allow yourself uh, an opportunity to regather and get set again in Muir College. That's skew. And uh, Gray now will have an opportunity. They're going to make a decision to scrum, it looks like. Jared Lennon making that call. And they will take the scrum three or four meters off the halfway line on the 15 meter. Still the talking to takes place uh, before each and every scrum, it seems here. Very high set once again, and a delayed hit on that far side. Stain feeds, and the penalty goes the way of Muir College here. That goes against uh, number one, Libongo Foster, scrumming in. All right, the call. Referee was in the perfect spot to see that. We are finding meters now with this uh, touch kick of that penalty. And they'll have, uh, so furthest they've progressed down the field so far today, uh, just outside the 22 and a set piece opportunity for them The home side here looking to put some points on the board and level up the scores, I'm sure. Once again, going for the five man line out. Trickery in the mid and uh, not a clean take as uh, Adam Ferry cleans up for Gray High School at the back there. But uh, ball's loose and no release from the tackler means uh, Gray get a penalty. And once again, just these errors uh, at line out time for Muir really costing them when they do get opportunities to try and put some points on the board. Johan Kutsia, great strike. Such a clean striker of the ball is the number 10 for the Reds. As he marches his team upfield and allows Cody Wilmot, the number two here, to feed his sixth or seventh line out of the morning. Line out stolen. Cody uh, will need to make up for that on his next opportunity as Muir managed to clean up. There's now on the open side a big carry from Muir met by Pumi Maguaza with a big hit and here the prop forward for Muir manages to carry but uh, all behind the advantage line though he manages very well to stay onto his feet and set that ruck and now going to be carried back into the 22 from Muir as uh, they're playing very deep and they're going to find a little bit of trouble but there's space out wide as uh, they manage to attack that area 
and uh, beating Ryan Wicks on the outside and then uh, the offload not going to hand. So uh, expansive and uh, a risky play from Muir College there. Looking to run things from deep inside their half and, and nearly paying off. Scrum sets, Stain feeds, Stain, Ryan Wicks, offload behind the back there, Johan Kutsia throws a long pass, Kota Lamoud, he's fleet footed and Nepo Williams uh, wants to get on the ball but uh, beats his first defender, beats his second, good feet by the young man, he's beat the third, fourth and still going just outside the 22, he sets the first ruck, Louis de Toy, pick and go on the short side, good go forward ball here from Gray. And the penalty going the way of Muir College. Excellent work at the breakdown of Muir College. Louis de Toy finding himself a bit isolated on the short side. Possibly needed to wait for a, some support play before he, uh, before he did that. Catching his own teammates by surprise. And uh, Muir just taking that pressure. And uh, sending numbers in at the breakdown. And uh, their number 10 pushing them down the field with a good exit and kick off that penalty kick. Staple to the Muir College line out. Five man once again. Front delay, trickery to the back, and missed line out. It's the third or fourth of the same kind. Pass goes behind the back from Wilmot and a knock on from Maguaza. Louis de Toy looked to clean that up, but uh, unfortunate knock on from a loose pass. Much of this game being played deep inside Muir College territory. But, uh, Muir have been good for their money defensively so far. Only trailing by five points as we uh, go down to seven minutes left in this half. Feed their own line out. Good scrum by Gray. Pick up and go in the left hand. On the right hand side, sorry, by the Muir College number nine. There's a messy play. Grayson numbers into this ruck. Could be a penalty and is the case. And that is a first turnover of the day for Lebango Foster. Number one with the Gray High School Reds. Excellent work over the ball by him. And now Johan Kutzia. Another good strike as he sends uh, his team to set a line up, line out five meters uh, from the Muir College touchline. That ball is uh, gone walkabouts over the fence, and uh, we'll look for uh, another ball to be sent onto the field now. Weather's holding out so far this morning. A little bit of rain and blustery winds in the early matches today. But um, so far so good in this uh, game with the wind uh, and rain staying away as Gray set a more on that five meter. Patience will be key here as they just wait for an opportunity to get moving. And there it does. If they can remain patient, this should go over fairly easily here and does so for number two, Cody Wilmot. Goes down for a mall try there for Gray High School on the left-hand side of the field as we see this again in slow motion. Beautiful work by the Gray Pack.
Kick to come here if Johan could see it. Score five or ten points to nil. Gray High School leading. Still five minutes left to play in the half as Johan could see it lines us up. Two difficult kicks he's had so far. Similar areas on the touch lines on both sides of the field as he. Four quick steps and a strike, but this one to the left. And the score remains 10-0 for Gray High School here on the Ellis Field at Muir College in Newton Egg. short Ryan Wicks underneath it and he makes a good clean catch hands off uh, is a big one and uh, Muir is over that ball and uh, penalty goes against uh, Dirk Nell it seems the loose head uh, great high school entering that ruck from an illegal area from the side Muir hit touch just outside the 22. Same line out again and not taken cleanly for the third time in a row for Muir. They'll be frustrated with the what's happening at line-out time for them, but they do clean up now as uh, the lock forward is met in the midfield offload, but brought to ground. Just on the 10 meter now. Muir attack the right-hand side, looking to find some space and do find some space here. Could be in trouble for Gray High School as uh, offload comes and doesn't go to hand and eventually cleaned up from Muir College as they remain with the ball now. First entrance into the 22 for them. And uh, pass doesn't go to hand again, but uh, Gray High School managed to attack that ruck and, uh, and clean up. There's space out wide here if they choose to use it, but uh, safety first as Johan Kutsia is charged down and Muir College have managed to get the ball if there's an offload available. Pick up and go. Muir managed to got this, get this ball five meters out. Gray now's defense will be tested for the first time in this half. Two minutes left to play. Pick and goes around the fringes, met by Labunga Foster. Big leg drive taking your college back five, six, seven meters so far. And again, this time, ball goes wide, and there's space again. Long pass doesn't go to hand. There's calls from the great players that it might be forward pass, but uh, not the case, says referee. As uh, Muir now look to probe in the midfield, offload, find some space. Pot around the corner now, wide, big man in midfield looking for looking for help and manages to find that on the right hand side, draws and passes, Code Lamoud makes the tackle on the outside. Gray's all offside here if they're not careful. The advantage comes and the penalty goes the way, side entrance again at ruck time, discipline costing Gray High School there. Tap and go, big man with a huge carry. And now, next forward pod play, Met Dirk Null makes the tackle. Now, the pod again, just on the left-hand side, patient play by Muir College, but uh, great defense, good line speed means they're pushing Muir College backwards. Wide play, Nipo Williams makes his tackle, and Kodal Lamoud makes the second. Just outside the 22 remain, Muir College is about the fifth. Phase of play here. Could be a forward pass there. And knock on is the case, but uh, 
no advantage, says the referee as a penalty goes the way of Muir College again. Tap and go, forward set up, big tackle, well met by Louis de Toy. Balls available, Muir College pick and go, pick and go again, Jared Lennon with a good defensive hit. This opportunity is wide, if Muir can use this now, they've got to get this ball moving. Pass doesn't go to hand and possible knock on now. And unforced errors are costing Muir College immensely there. Good passage of play for them. First time they've managed to get inside the 22 for, for Muir College and uh, unable to make use of those opportunities as the ref calls this uh, end to the half at 10-0 uh, going the way of the visitors as we end the first half here on the Ellis Field.
Back here again on the Ellis Field, kickoff now from Muir College. Uh, not going 10, didn't seem to me, but uh, Ref thought otherwise as Muir managed to regain possession themselves. And now on the halfway line, set the pod. Huge hit by Adam Faree. Forces the knock on in that contact. Good work. Uh, by Adam Free, the lock forward for Gray High School. Very, very physical player is he. Brandenstein will put in to his own scrum just inside half as he plays. Wicks carries offload to David Miller. He sells him out a little bit there with a hospital, hospital pass, but uh, David's leg drive is good as he manages to make three or four extra meters. Stain now coming the short, back the open side. Adam Fareed, the man who made that big tackle earlier, carries again. Balls behind the back. John Els cleaned up by Johan Kutsia, manages to find a bit of space, looks for the offload, but uh, decides against it. Good placement by him. Stain will play Walmart. Slow poison it is as uh, he just starts to make some meters with an excellent leg drive, does the diminutive hooker, making plenty of ground in leg drive there behind the back. Kutsia shows and goes, passes. Pumi Maguaza with a big carry. The number eight finally getting his hands on the ball. Haven't seen much of him so far this half. Stain has to go digging for it. John Els, low in contact, takes it up. Muir College looking to hold this up, but the ball eventually does find its way to the ground. Jared Lynn got his hands on it now, will pick and drive. And again, I'm just looking to see much of the same here for this Gray High School third team. Uh, another pick and drive, just slowly making the meters. Advantage uh, goes the way of Gray High School as Brandestain looks to get it. 
pass, Kota Lamoud short to the offload. Ryan Wicks looks to take it up, good clean. Stain is uh, under pressure there and uh, looks to play Domingo on the short side, but uh, ball goes to ground and will come back for the advantage all the way back on the five meter line. Tap and go, quick play, Jared Lennon going low, but met well in defense and try. Yes, try is the call from the referee there. Looked to me like uh, Jared had made use of his opportunity to place and uh, didn't make it, but uh, ref says it was all momentum as he goes over. Another five points added to the tally here for this Gray High School third team. 15 points to nil. And the elements might come and uh, have a bit to play as uh, the rain starts to come down and the wind starts to pick up. Behind Kutsia will be looking to put some points against his name here. <laughs> Unsuccessful conversion, that's uh, zero from three for Johan. But, uh, decent K from Jared Lunen there. Just finding his way over the whitewash and touching down for Gray High School. 25 minutes left to play in the second half here. Louis de Toy, open side flanker for Gray High School. Another good carry. Stain behind the back. Adam Faree on the carry again. Stain else. He sets up that loose ball, turned over now. Her college driven backwards and turned over again by Gray as Jared Lennon cleans up. Stain behind the back. Kutsia Meleriri's got some space now. If he can use it, he's quick. Is the big man, number 13 for Gray High School. Offload. Ryan Wicks to the uh, other centre as uh, Jan Kutsia looks to make a pass, but uh, doesn't go to hand. And offside the call there, accidental offside. Muir College tap and go now. Expansive play by them. Space on this right hand side, but the pass doesn't go to hand. And uh, again, looking to throw these risky offloads, and it's not paying off so far. That was great. High school. Now I've uh, put into a line out just inside the Muir College half. <laughs> But a scrum. Ball was knocked into touch. Should have had a decision to make there. They could decide whether they want that line out or whether they want the scrum. Scrum the opportunity taken. Stain now. Good scrum once again. Stain. Tackled there by the number nine from Muir College. Good defense and good pressure by him. And uh, because Stain knocks the ball on and uh, number eight, Pumi Maguaza, manages to pick that up from an offside position, it's a penalty for Muir.
Muir. Delayed, stolen. Brandestein cleans up. Walmart will uh, carry and set that ruck just on the 15 meter. Stain. John Els, big carry, bounces one. But Muir over the ball, could be a penalty. But the cleaners do arrive late. Adam Ferry around the corner. And now space on the outside. Johan could see David Melleriri, short offload, Pumi Maguazov getting his hands on the ball in the wide areas. And now Cody Lamoud will set. Jared Lunen, the try scorer, on the carry again, making it good yards. Stain, Ferri. He's been very effective with ball in hand as Adam Ferri did today. Stain now could see their space on this open side. Ryan Wicks will draw him past. Louis de Toy steps inside, plays uh, Marco and Domingo. He hasn't had much opportunity to find space, but uh, he's, uh, we're now on the halfway. Gray marching their team forward. John Els beats his first defender, beats his second, and takes three more to bring him down. Stain, Kutsia, Libango Foster, offloads on the outside to Adam Free, who was chopped, but held in contact as he gets up, and penalty for Muir College. Tap and go. He's tapped now. He'll have to play. Can't stop now. Plays everyone on side as uh, they look for the space on the right-hand side of this field. Knock on. And uh, these unforced errors will be driving the coaches of Muir College mad today. Just when they have a penalty, an opportunity to just ease some pressure and put themselves in a good position. Knock-ons and uh, silly decisions. Meaning they lose all that uh, effort and hard work. Brandenstein feeds Messi scrum. Ref puts his uh, whistle to his mouth and calls for the reset again. Scrum time been messy here for both teams today. Good turnout here at the Ellis Field. As a uh, Spectators start to flood in ahead of the first team game, ready to kick off at about uh, quarter to two today, where Gray High School's first team versus uh, the home team of Muir College will take place. Proud derby. It'll be a tightly fought, contested battle. Tap and go. Big carry. John Els bears the brunt of that uh, contact situation. As Muir set uh, a pot of 10 in the midfield. Ruck is competed, but uh, ref says uh, to leave it, and uh, Muir will look to move the ball out wide on the left hand side. And space is available here if it can get to some speed on the ball, but that's not the case as uh, a good catch up defense means uh, areas all covered. Line speed and good press from Gray mean uh, Muir College just keep going backwards. And turnover comes. Cody Wilmot gets his hand on the ball. Lubango Foster is going to make an offload here to Mark Domingo. First time we've seen him with a bit of space as he steps inside, steps outside again. And uh, sets this pot now on the 10 meter. Jared Lunen using his physicality well. Stain. Kutsia. Wicks. Lampracht. Melleriri shows and goes. And he's got an ankle tap on him as he goes to ground. And... Uh, Gray recover the ball. Stain. Else. Fights to make a couple of extra meters. And he's still going here. Six or seven meters in the contact. Stain looks for the ball. Johan Kutsia makes the decision to go back. And he's found his way through. Where it seems like there should have been no space at all. But a trademark try there for the number 10, Johan Kutsia, show and go. Straight through what seemed like a high traffic area. 
as uh, he touches down and puts points uh, on the board. 20 points to nil. As you see this uh, replay there, Johan Kutsia diving over the try line. Does the head boy of Gray High School. Hasn't had uh, the greatest day with the boots in front of the poles today. So to make up for those uh, six points left on the field, he uh, adds five to his name in the form of a try. As we said, trademark try from the young man. Very evasive carrier is he, tall number 10. And once again, unfortunately not able to add the extras. Score remains 20 points to nil with uh, 15 minutes left to play in the second half here at Muir College. The visitors leading. Slow to the kickoff here as we uh, wait for play to get started again. Substitutions made there for Gray High School as uh, Lumprecht makes his way onto the field in place of Coda Lamoud. Kick goes deep. Johan Kutsia on the ball, plenty of time and uh, a good exit by the Gray High School, number 10, pushing his team between his 10 meter and his 22. And the Muir will have a put into their line out here. Five man been the recipe for their line out set piece today. And I'm sure we'll see the same thing happen again. Possibly delay ball in the front and to the middle, or a little bit of trickery. Straight to the front, looked skewed to me, but uh, referee says no. Gray High School playing the man in the air, and the penalty now on the 15 meter for Muir College. So, Good touch finder there from Muir College now. 10 meters out. They'll be looking to take advantage of this, uh, probably the second entry throughout the game into the 22 of the Gray High School. They need to put some points on the board. Any hope of turning things around with 13 minutes left to play. Once again, the five man. Same call as before, straight to the front. Looks skewed, but ref says no. Messy pass taken up by the number 10. Counter up by Gray High School means they've got their hands on the ball. He was holding contact, should have been a penalty against Gray, and is. Looks like Louis de Toy penalized there as uh, the tap and go comes away. Big carry and stolen in the contact by Jared Lunen. He's been very, very good today. Has the lock forward for Gray High School. One of the standout performers here in this Reds team. Johan Kutsia has sliced that terribly off the right hand side of his boot, but it seems to have paid off as Nipo Williams manages to find some space on the inside for David Melleriri, who puts Divan Lamprecht with his second touch of the ball on the right hand side of the field here. Stain has to go mining for it. Adam Faree carries, staying on the ball, offload to Lubango Foster, the prop forward diving at the ankles is the defender, that should be a penalty and a yellow card. Dangerous play from the Murat there. Yes, and is the case, very, very dangerous. 
to dive at a player's knees like that and uh, he's punished with a five minute break in the sin bin. There's a penalty going the way of Gray High School. 20 points to nil the score. 11 minutes left to play in this half as Johan could see it. Attempt to find touch on the far side. And he does just that. Walmart, barring those first two lineouts of the day, has been very effective at lineout time for the Reds. Gray High School's third team. And Adam Ferry, safe hands as they set their mall. They'll look to be patient here and just walk this uh, ball up the field. And they do at the back there. Cody Walmart seems to have got his hands on it. Brandon Stain just talking to him, making sure he understands where he is. That's the 22 meter line, 10 meters made in this mall. Muir have got to be careful in from the side there. But Brandon pulls it out. Short ball there. Offload, out the back, loose ball, cleaned up by Johan Kutsia, his knees on the ground, no, Marco and Domingo on a very short kick pass has now set up on the 15 meter, Stain, Oyama Vukubi, this is his first uh, touch of the game coming on, he's knocked that ball on, his first game back. Injured uh, early on in preseason, and uh, will be looking to make his mark. That seemed uh, like a touch, and ball out just inside the Muir half. Grace Haskell had to put in to this lineout. Five man line outs for Gray High School. Walmart feeds. Knock on in the line out. Advantage being played. Muir carry. Play on the call from referee. And now Muir spread the ball wide on that left hand side of the field. Long pass straight into touch. An advantage seems to be over, even though they've gone a couple of meters backwards here. Set them all once again. That's uh, 15 meters so far. Gray will be happy with the outcome here as the mall does slow down. Stain removes it from the back. Out the back from Wicks and uh, knock on there by Johan Katsia. Mio put it to boot straight down the middle of the field. Nipo Williams, not a clean collection, but. Uh, space in front of him and he's got wheels if he chooses to use it steps inside and tackled well by the Muir defense Brandon Stain nowhere to go looks for Johan Kutsia nowhere to go for him but he shows and goes beats one defender takes uh, two to bring him down Stain Foster Stain Snipes himself, and he's found some space on the right-hand side. He, does he have the wheels to get there all the way? Good tackle. And turnover. Waiting to see what the call is from the referee here. 22 dropout will be the call. Brandon Stain finding space on the short side of that uh, 
ruck. No, it's a five meter scrum. Apologies, difficult to see exactly what that call is from the referee, but uh, Brandon Stain tackled and then ripped in the tackle and uh, taken over by the Murat to dot down inside his try line. So carried back the call means Gray High School have uh, the put in. Seems like the backs have something special planned for us here. Uh, set up. Free kick going the way. Oh, Muir there. Brandon Stain needs to get that ball in quicker. As the set is not very uh, clean. Tap and go from their five meter line. No, re no real other options. They don't want to give the ball back to Gray. And then, a oh, this is very messy. <laughs> Comedy of errors behind the try line there for Muir as uh, the exit doesn't come. And uh, kick goes straight into the hands of the number 12, Ryan Wicks, who won't have to score an easier try in his life. Just falling over the try line, Ryan Wicks. But uh, they all count, and uh, he'll be delighted to put his uh, name on the scoreboard there. And Johan Kutzia adding the extras there. His first conversion of the day, 27 points to null. Four minutes left to play. Gray High School lead here away from home at Muir College on the Ellis Field. Four minutes remaining in this game. And then uh, the first teams to come after this, and that kick goes deep, possibly too deep, all the way dead. And if Gray didn't get a touch on that, we'll have to come all the way back to the halfway line. And uh, it'll be scrummed down all the way on the halfway line again. Gray High School will have the feed. <laughs> Coaches, uh, Mr. Tyler Buerta and JP Skein for Gray High School. Passionate Reds coaches. If uh, you do manage just to get uh, a little bit of eyes on him, you'll notice uh, bright red socks and a bright red beard to show for his passion to the Reds. Stain feeds, messy scrum. And a reset once again. Gray's dominance at scrum time here, almost uh, to their downfall as Muir struggling to cope. Means uh, Gray can't get clean ball from their own set piece. Stands filling up here on the Ellis Field as uh, all the other teams have wrapped up their play for the day. Only one game left to go. The big one. Muir College first team taking on Gray High School's first team in approximately 15 minutes as uh, Katia tries to put the boot through. But uh, unsuccessfully as uh, Muir carry and uh, managed to secure the ball prop forward from Muir he's been effective in the carry today he's uh, been used often 
And now Muir will look to spread the ball wide into the midfield. That uh, line press is good. And the penalty going the way for not rolling away. That penalty against Cody Walmart. 40 seconds on the clock until the first teams take the field here today. Exciting encounter to come. And much to play for for both teams. We all want now to use these final seconds of the game and uh, to put some points on and to close up on a positive note. Clean line out, don't maul it, and it's taken straight off the back and uh, the pass above the heads, but manages to clean up. And now the turnover comes. Dirk now with the offload, Vakubi. Offload again. We have Ryan Wicks, the big number 12 center, carries the ball up. Stain, Kutsia, looking for touch. Finds grass. No, doesn't find grass. Good collection from the Murats now. Is there space on this left-hand side of the field if they manage to use it? It's messy play here. Still Muir have got the ball. As they send numbers into this ruck. Probing the right hand side as they're caught behind the advantage line. Great flat numbers into this ruck in hopes of turnover. And the turnover does come for Yama Vakubi, who manages to find an offload to David Milleriri, the number 13. Offload out the back, could have been knocked on. Ref didn't see that, but surely turnover. Penalty for Muir, isolated. Were the uh, great players on the short side? And now Muir. No option but to tap and go. Time is up on the clock. Another big carry from the prop forward. He's been uh, really effective, used him very, very often. And now ball goes backwards. Cross kick <laughs> straight to. Nipo Williams, he'll find some space. Good step on the inside. Fortunately for Muir, he goes down in a little slip. Brandon Stain probes the right hand side. Pass comes. Good carry. And over the touch line, over the try line goes the man in the white scrum cap. For Gray High School. Closing out this game, 32 points so far with the conversion to come to nil. Difficult to see who the try scorer was there. But Johan Kutsia, one more opportunity with the boot now to add the two points. And uh, the wind doing him uh, a bit dirty there, not making it as uh, the ref blows the final whistle. Muir, no, the visitors, Gray High School, third team, running out the victors, 32 points to nil at the end of uh, an enticing game on the Ellis Field with uh, one more game to come here. Gray High School, first team versus Muir, first team all the way in Newton Egg. Exciting game to come. Thank you for joining us.
Yeah, just a quick welcome to everyone uh, to uh, Kibicha, formerly known as uh, Yusenag, who've uh, welcomed Grey High School from the friendly city, Kabecha, here on their uh, wet and soggy fields today in very chilly winter conditions in early April. And uh, the great teams just run into the field, they've done their war cry, and uh, maybe a bit of gamesmanship now. I think the Muir boys are letting them wait a bit, it's cool out there. I'm here with my colleague today, Linton from Muir College. Good to have him on board, and uh, we'll run through the through the game today. It's been uh, some tough fixtures for the Muir boys today. I think most of the results have gone gray, Gray's way from the 14s this morning through to the, uh, the third team that played their second team a few moments ago. 
and that was a comfortable win um, in the second half, really, for the grey thirds. Um, but this is a different game. I know last year at, at uh, Muir's 200th festival, uh, Muir pushed Grey extremely tight the last few minutes of the game uh, in, in 2023, and I'm sure this year will be no different as the Muir boys run on the field now and uh, get to do their war cry. The Grey boys all set up to go. It's been a good start to the season. One loss to, uh, to Hilton down at the, uh, the Bishops Festival in Cape Town a few weeks back. But they've had some comfortable wins against Hudson Park and a, and a nice win against Saks, um, also at that same festival. Afternoon, everyone. Thanks, uh, Garen. I hope uh, the boys need to step up this afternoon and see how, how it pans out. But welcome to you, to the, uh, the Grey Lads, all the parents, and hopefully we are for a good game here. Yeah, the Muir boys and their supporters are ready to rumble. Uh, the Muir first team, uh, Umdudimba, Mukait and seconds in the front row, the locks of blow and roll. Uh, loose forwards, Boy, Swai and Mayer. Uh, the halfbacks are Dingan and Kalani. The wings, uh, Mbali and Soyaya, uh, with the centres, Koran and Hot. And then uh, Jansen filling up number 15 there. And the first team for Gray has not changed too much. Uh, got Zita, Vessels, Atkinson up front, Warden, Howard, Brits, Janssen, Hobson up front. Uh, Hobson the captain again today, He's having a great season so far. Halfbacks and Kobani, Smith, and uh, as we take a good kick off there from the Muir boys, just pushing it a bit too far, went out in the full, and they'll come back for a scrum on the halfway. Not a good start there for the Muir lads, but at least uh, Gray's got the opportunity now to set up there from the middle and see. Uh, are these structures already for the day? Yeah, we'll see this this back line with uh, Smith coming in at 10 and uh, Scorsano back in the mix with Prince Lou on the wing and Bizio, uh, the young German, and, and Marburg taking on the center positions and Carl Callan, they're the number 15 berth, looking to impress today. Unfortunately, now the, the weather's not playing uh, playing game here with us, but at least we can. Uh, See how the, the lad skills have been put up together for a training. Now Makabana with a feed, Hobson with a pick. The pop the game down the short side there. That was busy taking the ball up, looking to reset, getting out the pod set up. Some good defense there from Muir. And uh, first penalty of the day. To Grey Ha. He wasn't releasing on the ground and they're gonna to look to put the put the ball out near the Muir 22. It's quite interesting that the, the Grey Boys came out with a white strip today. Yeah, this is the, the, the white kit. I think they might have probably expected some sort of clash of colours, perhaps. So the white kit they used down in Cape Town on the tour as well. Um, it is a bit of a pre-season kit, but if there's a clash of colours, they will use it. Obviously, the sky blue, the light blue is the preferred colour, and I'm sure uh, when we have you guys around next year for a home game, they'll be wearing it. No, definitely. Those are the colours that we all used to, since uh, one of uh, the old uh, clashes here between the two traditional boys' schools in the area. Great throw there from Hobson. Taken by Blayton Ward at lock, looking to get the, the line out more moving. Putting up a good defence there. Makabana. Artu Pizio with the crash ball. Good, strong feet there from the young man, staying on his feet for a good 30 meters. Gray looking for some quick ball, Makabane, Artu Smith. A little bit of a hesitation there into ground. So the Gray was out to play today. Taking it up hard there. A bit of slow ball, yeah, look at the pick and go. Tanner Howard with the carry. Gray just looking to set things in front of the poles there. Your defense is well set. A good strong hit there from the Muir boys. Just lodged the ball with the referee, says backwards. They just hope the Muir boys can uh, keep up their defense now because Gray's been on the, on the go and attacking hard. Now five yards out. Just looking to pick and go, try and slow things down. It's all about patience now. Good leg drive there. And there we go. Great try there. Well done there to the Grey Lads. Good try. 
from this point of view, it looks like young Ben Vessels. The hooker with a lovely leg drive there. We'll see on the replay in a moment. A little pick and go, good slow down decision there amongst the, the forwards and the captain. And you see Vessels takes the hit, takes the pressure, and then gets the leg drive going and gets himself through the tackle zone and puts the first try under the post. Good result for Gray, who are playing into a stiff breeze. The Eastleys up today, bringing us this wet conditions we can see out there. And a nice conversion there from Zephyr Smith. It's his first one of the day. I'm sure he'll be looking for some confidence going into the season. As a geo teacher, we have noticed the, the cold front come through and then the, the cutoff low that's been sitting now over the Eastern Cape. It's most likely going to bring lots of rain over the next week or so. Well, as a geo teacher, I'll take your, uh, your word for it. I teach a primary school, so uh, geography is not my forte. As they say, geography is alive. <laughs> Gray, was he running it out of their 22, setting it up just outside, looking for the pods? Janssen with a nice carry. Good defense from Muir, really uh, stepping up for the challenge here today. Atkinson asking for it. Another good draw there from Ben Vessels. A good carry there by the hooker. Oh, great thinking twice about an exit from the boot. They're, they're kicking into a stiff breeze. Looks like I can go for an up and under from nine. Big box kick. And uh, that just traveled out in the full. I think that's the risk of kicking in, the, in these conditions. Nice strike, but uh, when the wind got hold of it, it drifted it out to touch, and they're going to come back just outside the great 22 for Muir's first line out of the day. Well, let's see how the Muir boys are set up here into this, uh, the wind and the conditions that aren't favoring either, either team. But I think we're with Gray's pack slightly a bit bigger than the Muir pack. They'll be using the, that to their advantage as the day goes on. And if the weather, weather carries on as well like this. Yeah, I think good call with a short line out here. Uh, wind uh, will definitely affect the, the thrower. Uh, good competition there from Gray. Still back on the Muir side. Good run there from the number eight. Jude Mayer. Muir looking to take up a few phases, yep. Gray needs to keep their discipline on defence. Oh, unfortunately, a knock on there. Fours will be a bit upset there, especially when they work so hard to keep the ball, and then uh, Guran just let it, uh, let it go. But they oh, that love-hate relationship between the forwards and the backs. <laughs> the fatties and the quickies, they call it. They won't be happy with that. They'll no, have a few def words. definitely not, definitely not. We're down to Lockhorns for the second time today. That front row of, of Muir, Ndudimba, Kayat and Seconds up against Zita, Vessels and Atkinson. With uh, Makabana to uh, feed the ball into the scrum, second scrum of the day. Big shot there from Gray. Yeah, solid, solid hit there by the loose head pop from Gray. Another, gra another great run there by Rick Bizio in the midfield. He seems to be quite busy, that Bizio. Definitely keep the, the defence on their toes. He carries on like this. Oh, slowing it down nicely there, Muir. Just trying to control the pace of the game. Tanner Howard taking it up. Nice early set. Out to Akanani Zita. Hit hard in the tackle there, but managed to get through it. Uh, well, have for good defence there from Muir. Got the hands all over him. And uh, penalty for Muir. Again, Zita holding on in the tackle. A bit of a touch and go there, fell a bit short, but at least uh, the Muir side came out with a line out. Yeah, it worked out well for them. That's it did. Error there from the grey fullback, unfortunately locking that ball into touch, just not holding it. Obviously, these wet conditions having having any effect on the ball. Now the conditions can have a bit of effect, and of course with this uh, muddy conditions there in the, the grey field, I mean the Muir field being all brown because of the mud. Can just get skid off a bit there and cause a bit of havoc for the fullback. 
and number few, uh, Muir number five, uh, Blake Raw, just having uh, some tape to his head, just getting some running repairs. As the number two, uh, Kayad looks to throw the ball in. Great take in the line out. Dungan out to Kalani. Good uh, rush defense there by the grey side. It closed the boys down. It's Dungan out to Kalani again. Another big hit. Great got options here if they can uh, recycle this ball quickly. Ball taken by Blayton Board. Michael Barney looking for a little show and go at line around the ruck and getting hit hard in the tackle there. He's going to feel that one tonight. Graves looking to control things here. Ross Atkinson with a pick and go. Tanner Howard. Great side using the, the big boys there to their advantage with those pick and goes. Makabani looking for another, another up and under. Could be a good option. It's falling short uh, of the 22. Oh, good chase there by Skosana. Nice bit of a hustle down the left wing here. Yeah. yeah, forced the, the right winger great to make, I mean, of Muir to make a bit of a shoddy pass. But that's what happens there when uh, boys are under pressure. It's a good, good defence there by the Grey lads. Oh, definitely some pressure building here. Grey just mixing it up, trying to go wide a few times, then pick and go, trying to slow things down, just trying to dictate the pace of the game. As I said, I think Muir would want to use this wind this half. It's quite a stiff breeze behind them. I'm sure they'd want to play more of their rugby down in Grey's half. I agree with you with that, but unfortunately we need possession to, to do that. The Grey boys are really doing well with uh, keeping ball in hand. Yeah, busy with another big leg drive through the midfield there. No, definitely, definitely a standout player there in the centres. Big run oh, from Blayton good, Ward. Good little offload there. Off to Tanner Howard, looking for some quick recycle, looking to go wide. They've got the numbers. The boys have to scramble a bit quickly. Ben Vessels in the mix again. He's everywhere today. Again, the heavies with a couple of pick and goes, yeah. No, that's the hooker Vessels. He's having a good game. And uh, I think that's uh, another one for the Grey Lads. Uh, looks like young uh, Akanani Zita, who snuck over there for the second try of the day for Grey High School. But it's uh, some good support from his front row forwards who all latched onto him and got him over the line. That takes the score to 12-0 with the kick to come. It'll be a tough kick in these conditions. Zeph will be looking to aim it at the right upright, uh, upright and, uh, and, and give it a, a proper scope. <laughs> That's proper Eastern Cape accent coming yeah, out there. Definitely, eh? definitely. Yeah, from, sounds like an old Hager yeah, sitting next to me. <laughs> yeah, I stem from East London stock, the border region. So, uh, we have some strong, strong accents down that way. No, we definitely do here in the Eastern Cape. Yeah, unfortunately, pulled that. The wind uh, hooked that past the left upright. He'll be disappointed. I think that was uh, definitely worth a two-pointer. You might see from the screen now the, the rain is pushing across from left to right. At quite a rapid rate. So Muir want to put this ball deep into the grey half. Very good kick off there from the fly half. Kilani. Well gathered by Grey. Grey looking to set it up the midfield, give themselves some options. Smith back in the pocket. Not the best pass. Managed to get it away. Skosana with the chase. Up against number 14, Suyaya. Hard runner. Oh, it's a great tackle there by Tanner Howard. Uh, referee uh, suggested a high tackle. Don't think there was any malicious intent there. I think just going down in the, in the slippery weather. Always a pointing at the post here. Yeah. It's not a bad option. It's still early days, 12 0 down. It's a strong wind behind them. And uh, looks like the number 12 is the pole kicker, Brent Coran. Brent Coran, correct. 
to be a talented footballer. But I think. Uh, no, it's a bit of a cliche, but uh, just try and chip away at the, at the lead that Gray has here. No, I think Muir's option here would definitely try and stay in the game, and, and that'll build pressure. I think. No. Yeah, I think uh, going into the, in the half time, we'll have a see, we'll have a look as to how things are panning out. Uh, but, the, but I think the, the Muir coaches are well experienced. I'm sure they'll have a plan up their sleeve. Um, I must say, a number of our management staff and coaches are ex-Muir boys as well, Darren Null and. Uh, a couple Mark others. Mark Killian, and uh, I think you're head of rugby for a Barnard at the moment, also old Murat. That's right. So it's quite a quite a pickle for them to decide who they're shouting for today. <laughs> oh, unfortunately, oh. just uh, left that bit, short. Yeah. But under there, maybe we should have just, uh, as, as you said, put a bit of a, a, a proper scop in there. <laughs> yeah, you won't be happy with the strike. Not an easy kick though when the ground's a bit wet underfoot, it's not as stable as they'd like. Zephyr Smith with a drop kick for the 22. Deep into number 14, Suyayo's hands. Nice little pop to number 15, Janssen looking for the cross kick. Good option there by Dingan going across field. Now yeah, that's well gathered there by there. Oh, well covered. But I think the, the ref might, what's he going for, what's the fall? Should have been a, should be a scrum. Yeah, and it wasn't carried over from this point of view. Yeah, no, it, it wasn't at all. should be a 22, but I think he's just checking with the linesman. With the AR, there we go. No, yeah, correct, there we go. Back to the 22. Yeah, I think that was well gathered there by Mayor Prinsloo. Yeah, with a, with a bouncy, bouncy ball in the wet weather. Well gathered there, lad. Gray mustn't look to try and speed things up. Get themselves in the hood. Nice little kick that is. Well done there from Zephyr. Little show and go from the, the lock forward, the Muir lock forward there. Jethro, rather Blake Raw again. Blake Raw, boy. Gray just looking to keep their, their discipline on defence. Gray's pushing nicely and closing the, the Muir boys down. Not giving them any space to work with. Options on wide here if they want it. Need some quick recycle. Gray just resetting their D. Oh, definitely a, a rush defense happening here today, putting Muir under immense pressure. So the rush defense is working, catching the Muir boys behind the gain line. Oh, bit of a bit of a hash there for the Muir uh, lock boy. Oh, ball's getting a bit wet and soapy out there at the moment. A couple of knock-ons both sides. First from Muir, so they'll. Lock horns again for about the fifth scrum of the day. Gray definitely had the upper hand in the last scrum. They looked like they had the, the hit and got the edge, but... Uh, no, definitely. They definitely had the upper hand in the scrum. I think rules at schoolboy level, you can only push a meet and a half for and safety half. sake, so it helps to a degree, but... Uh, but if you still have the hit, the first hit in the first shoulder, you've got the ball, it's yours. Makabane feeds. Hobson struggling to get a control of that ball in these conditions. Gray Ford's work back well there to, uh, to cover the ball, get it off again. Leighton Ward with the carry. Just trying to set it up in the midfield there and look at attack options. The referee saw some infringement there, looked like holding on. Yeah, holding, that's his call, holding on. Not too sure if the ruck was formed by that stage, but uh, obviously happy with the with the Murat's hands in there, which is fine. And uh, good, uh, good clearance kick there by Kilani. Very good penalty. Taking play deep inside the, the grey half. There'll be a line out on the 22, on the grey 22. Nice attacking line out for, uh, for the Murats. <coughs> Another short line out called, five man line out. Kite with the throw, missing his jumper. Let's gather there goes Hobson on the run. Uh, good gather there by the, by the Grey boys. Bit of an old cliche, get out of jail free card there. They're looking at options wide, yeah. Bit of a high risk game, looking at the, uh, the cross kick. Skosana looking to gather it. Uh, ref wasn't happy with something. The guys were in front of the ball, he said. 
And he's going to come back for an, an early infringement for the penalty. He looked like at the line-out. Oh, he's a little high tackle on Hobson. I think sometimes from up here we battle to see what the ref's calling. You know, in between the umbrellas and uh, the cameras, it, it is a bit, uh, it is a bit uh, hard to get a good view here, but uh, we're going to try our best. Zaren Zemka, Nico Klaassen. Ah. Some proper murats here. Oh, missing his penalty kick. Muir looking to run this ball back. Oh, some dancing feet there from the left wing. Mbali. Mbali. This is the right game plan for the Murai just to try and pin the Grey Boys back into their half. And then Zephyr Smith looking for the little uh, banana kick, managed to find his safe touch. That's about a, a 40 meter gain of territory there. And I think that, that, that is, that's a good game plan. I think Muir just need to keep pinning the Grey Boys back. Keep putting them under pressure. They're just making a couple of errors at line out. They can just find the jumpers. Just find the jumpers. I agree with you. Just trying to pin the boys back there because once uh, Gray gets going, it makes it difficult to stop. Oh, unfortunately, just as you said, that commentator's curse will break yeah, away. Just can't release the ball there. Looking to reset in there on the right midfield. Artuzita with the pop. Nice quick hands there. Ben Vessels taking the hit. Options left and right if they wanted. A little slide ball past the forwards. Trying to get some width. Great break. Carl Callahan with the break up the midfield. Oh, oh. I just can't find the support runner. Yeah, unfortunately, ball not going to hand, and Muir have collected it and unfortunately run out of out of field space and out to touch. And it'll give Gray a line out about 10 meters inside the, the Muir half. Callahan had a nice breakthrough there. Unfortunately, his offload just didn't go to hand. I think the coaches will be disappointed with that. No, I think they definitely will because they, they put the whole Muir defence in the back foot there and the Muir had to scramble. And they would have definitely been, uh, been away if that final pass went to hand. Yeah, I know, I know the great coaches, Matt King and Simon Volzi, quite meticulous with their planning and, and execution. So um, I'm sure they might have a word of practice on Monday. Definitely might have pulled some uh, couple of grey hairs out there now. Good take there by uh, Tanner Howard in the lineout. Setting up the live mall in the oh, midfield. Good, good mall there by the grey side. Looks like they might have a penalty advantage, so they've got options here. Grey boys uh, directing the mall there quite well. Trying to reset there quite nicely. They're snaking it through. Muir just trying to get their, their defence set, but they're struggling at the moment. Referee give penalty. Just be careful they don't uh, sack them all. Good try there by the Grey Boys. Nice uh, rumble from uh, between the 10 and 22. Yeah, that was well worked. Couldn't quite see who the try scorer was. Might have been one of the lock forwards, either Howard or Ward. They managed to keep their shape as they're working their way towards the line. To see who they give the half halves to after the replay there. Yeah, we can't quite make it out. Might have been uh, Blayton Ward with the try there. Uh, Zephyr Smith trying to get the conversion. Unfortunately, this time, you know, missing it to the right, kicking into a really stiff breeze. I think he tried to give it a little bit more air, and the wind just got underneath it a bit. Takes the score to 17 points to Gray, uh, zero to Muir at this stage. Still with 12 minutes to go in the first half. I think the Grey boys are using the, the weather to their advantage now, having those uh, driving malls. Oh, good carry there by Fletcher Britz. Looks like he's taking a bit high in the tackle. Referee's got his arm out for a, a penalty. Collected by Zephyr. Uh, the Muir boys need to watch those tackles, drop them a little bit. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, Gray's going to capitalize the whole time 
All the new rules from Saru that we had to get done, you know, the tackle height uh, through Boxmart, it kept us, kept us busy for a few days. No, definitely that, that Boxmart and the, all those questions definitely kept you uh, as a coach busy for a good couple of evenings to try and get your, uh, your Boxmart number, otherwise you weren't allowed to stand next to the field. Oh, it feels like a, a learner's license test, like I failed it a few times last year. Couldn't get through one stage, I got to stage five and I couldn't get to stage six. And anyway. uh, they always keep changing the answers, so you never know what's happening. Make it more difficult for us. I know I'm a bit slow, but my word, they caught me out a few times. Here we have uh, Hobson with the throw in the line-out. Great line-out. Well taken yeah, there by Tanner Howard. And Vessels peeling off the back, trying to get the pop ball away. Unfortunately, knocked on. Good luck by, by Bizio again. He's definitely trying to uh, be a presence here today. Well, he definitely has been a presence. He's had uh, three good breaks in the game. Got some silky skills and uh, strong legs to get him to the tackle zone. He's uh, definitely a youngster to watch. He's in grade 11 in, in the hostel at Gray and uh, one to watch for the future. No, definitely, definitely one to watch. Just hopefully we can uh, keep uh, our boys here in the Eastern Cape, especially him being in grade 11. Lock here, Raw uh, just coming off quickly. Got a bit of a bloody nose, but I'm sure he'll be back on shortly. I'm sure Muir want their lock forward to uh, join their ranks again for the scrum down. Callum Jansen and Fletcher Britz on the flank for the, for the Grey Boys. And here we have young uh, Clomelo Dungani with the feed. Good scrum there from Muir. What an intricate backline move there. Unfortunately, the ball did not go to hand. Yeah, that's the problem. Maybe trying to be a little bit too fancy in this weather. Now they're looking to exit. Nice big kick downfield. Well Kip covered there by the great fullback. to did advance a little bit. That might, oh. If it wasn't for that ball, it would have worked in great advantage. It would have gone all the way back to scrum from the kick. Oh, I thought Gray were very happy that ball went out. I think if that young prop forward, <laughs> seconds, Jethro, Jethro Seconds, Jethro had collected seconds that. that, he was licking his lips, ready to get stuck, stuck into the wing. He was chasing him down. Yeah, unfortunately, just the bounce of the rugby ball beat him a bit there. I think Scorsano is quite happy to see that ball go out into touch. He looks I think like uh, pinned back with the weather, it was actually ended up being a good kick for Gray. Yeah, young Seconds looks like a proper man mountain. Eastern Cape beef at its best. Nice throw in no, there. No, he uh, definitely goes back for seconds every now and again. Oh. Now we'll collect it there by Tanner Howard. Getting a ground grade, looking to set it up. Getting the pods working. Little Atkinson, a little offload to, to Ben Vessels. Now ben Vessels has been quite busy this, uh, this half. No, he's running some great lines today. Makabana, just ball not going to hand. A little bit of a hard pass, just didn't quite time it correctly. And Gray will be disappointed with that. Definitely they had, had. They had good opportunity out wide. Looks like they had a two and one uh, option there. Now I can see the coaches having a little chat behind the poles. They're not happy with that. I think sometimes when we get to the red zone, the guys just panic a bit and make, make some wrong decisions. And that's something which I know Gray wants to improve on this year. When they get into the 22, just decision making needs to improve. I think that's uh, one of our biggest schoolboy problems with all our boys that they, when they're playing in the red zone, they want to rush it instead of just being a bit more patient and setting up a phase or two. Our ref just trying to settle things down there amongst the forwards. This should be a big exit from Muir, looking to take the ball straight back into the grey half. As I said, that strong east wind blowing at Muir's backs. Seven minutes still on the clock. There's still time to put some points on the board in this first half. Either the coach, the great coach from the back there directing his players just to drop a bit. 
as you mentioned, the, the winds that are at Muir's back. Yeah, Muir but, looking to set up the, in the midfield there. Good carry from the youngster, looking to the exit now. So yeah, yeah, but I think maybe they should have just gone straight with the kick. Ref said knock backwards, Carl Callan on the run. Great run from the big man. Working hard there in the tackle. Atkinson with a carry. Great carry. They're going to try and keep in the forwards. It's too wet to go wide. It'll pop to bed vessels again. Oh, great carry. Lovely try. Looked like from Hobson. And that's the great eighth man and captain. Deputy head boy of school, head boy of hostel. Johnny Hobson doing his thing at the back of the mall. Now the grave was nice and patient there, didn't rush it. Down, slowed it down to bring those forwards in, coming around the corner there. Yeah, I think the coach would be much happier with that. There was much less panic in that, in that decision making there. Yes, there was. Cool heads prevailed there. Let's see if Zephyr Smith has worked out this wind direction yet. No, not yet. No, I think he's just uh, double-crossed himself a few times there. The wind is he's gusting a bit. It's definitely east. But he's just struggling to get on top of it. Luckily, the forwards are doing all the work at the moment and putting the points on the board for them. No, I think Muir with five minutes to go, just looking to slow things down, try and ease into the second half. No, they have to. Otherwise... Uh with uh, the Grey Boys and having the win at the backs in the second off, could take it away a bit. Yeah, well, I'm sure they'd like to let Myberg loose and Prince Lou and Callahan again. Oh, just score sign, unfortunately, not able to hold on to that. Referee says play on. A bit messy at ruck time. Turn good over little turn over there for Mio. Let's see if they can maybe put this to advantage. I think Mayer should have gone wide, they're not cut back into those big boys. Oh, good flat ball there from the 10. Much better from the Muir back line. Gray scrambling on D at the moment. Oh, good turn out of the tackle there from the number 15, Tyler Janssen. Unfortunately, turnover and Gray looking to play some ball back in the Muir half. Some slinky feet there from the youngster. Looking to Same boy, he's got quick little feet there. Not one of the best passes there to, to Gilani standing at 10, the first receiver. Oh, Mayor Prince going on a run here, putting his head down. It's been a bit quiet today. Of course, he hasn't had much ball, but a great run there. Makabani looking to shift the ball now, just to get it through the hands. Now you can see the two wings, they've been a bit quiet. Their jerseys and shorts are still nice and clean. But of course, it's uh, due to the weather that the we, uh, forwards have been to do all the work. Makabani looking to slink it out to uh, Zephyr. The pass is on wide, there's a the three-man overlap. Mayor Prince is staying strong on his feet. Great run from the young man. No, that was a good run there from Prince Lou. There's still options left and right. Makabani trying to dig the ball out. Let's get it through the hands. Artus Kosana. And to Biggio. And try time. Rick Biggio. As mentioned before, he's been quite busy in keeping the Muir defence on their toes. And he's been uh, awarded now with a good try there. Yeah, he probably thinks he deserved that. He's been putting a lot of hard yards in and uh, managed to be at the end of a backline move. And one of his fellow boarders there, Zubinati Skosana, just popping the ball to him to uh, dot over in the left-hand corner. And this will give Zephyr something to think about. <laughs> Struggling with the kicking today in these conditions. But I know he, uh, he relishes a challenge. No, I think any schoolboy would have been battling with the uh, kicker goal this afternoon. Oh, 
it's a much better strike. Right direction, but the win, winning the battle once again. And just leaving it short on the right-hand side. I'm sure he'll be looking forward to the second half where he can start using the wind yeah, at the his wind back. I think we, we're sitting up in a commentary. We didn't feel the wind as much as the boys out there. Yeah, our last, last minute of the game. The ref's going to play to the last second. Kalani with the kickoff, nice big hanging kick again. Uh, Fletcher Britt missing that. And unfortunately, the Mio boy knocking it on. Probably their best chance of the game. Trying to feed off the mistakes of Gray. Yeah, that was one of the opportunities that, of course, they could have taken. So yeah. just a wet ball. Probably got uh, a bit slippery there. Yeah, Fletcher won't be happy with that. It's very high standards for themselves. And I think now Makabani we're looking to get that ball out and, and just put it out to touch. I've been going to the second half. Gray sitting at 27 to, to 0 at the moment. Makabani with the feed. Hops in at 8. And Makabani taps it into touch. And the referee will blow his whistle for the end of the first half here in uh, Kabiga, formerly known as Utenag. Kericha, yeah. Kericha, sorry, Kericha. But uh, fantastic hospitality here today and uh, everyone enjoying themselves as we look forward to the second half in a few moments' time.
Big dicky, big uh, deep kick there from the Zephyr Smith. Trying to play the rugby deep inside Mears half. Oh, well taken there by Callum Janssen. Mears trying to slow it down, hands all over it. Oh, nice little quick hands there. Slinky stuff there from Tanner Howard. Akabana just trying to dig that ball out of the ruck. To Smith. A little show and go. He's testing his opposite number there. And well tackled. Akabana with a pop. Looks like it was out to Janssen again. Grey boy's just juggling the ball. He's going to slow it down. A little pick and go. As we said in the first half, the ball is quite wet at the moment. And there's still a stiff breeze blowing behind Grey High School's back. Atkinson hit hard in the tackle there. Probably a bit too upright. Makabane out to Howard. Good fight there at ruck time from Muir. Slowing things down. Now five yards out. You're under massive pressure at the moment. The Grey Fords definitely dominating. They're making every carry count at the moment. Nice carry again. Makabane looking to go right. Little show and go. And he slips through. Missed tackle there from the Muir boys, unfortunately. Grey Fords with all the hard work there, something in the, your defence. Line was uh, wide awake there and just quickly snapped around. It's a good try there by Makabane. Yeah, he's been probing that for the last few games, just getting towards that last five, ten meters, and then sometimes getting a bit too much under pressure. Uh, but the decision there was the right one. A little show and go, and got through a little half tackle and uh, to dot the ball down just to the right of the posts, which should give Zephyr a better chance of slotting one of these. I see but that the winner is back now, Diso. Let's see if he's uh, 
I actually see they've changed kicker. They've oh, they actually have, got yeah. the fullback, young Carl Callahan. He's got a big left foot on him. Yeah, oh, good strike. Made very good use of that left foot. That's the second conversion of today, taking the score to 34 points to zero. No, unfortunately, with the Greys scoring uh, so, so many tries at the moment, they don't actually need the conversions to, to be going through the poles. Yeah, well, there's a bit of a concern with Gray this year, not having a, a, a recognised kicker, so to speak. I mean, as good as the kickers are, they often talk about having a, a young kicker that's come through the ranks. Zephyr showing a lot of class there, 10 at the moment. Kyle sometimes a little bit inconsistent, but um, yeah, they need more uh, kicks under pressure and hopefully that'll come good in some of those big games this year. Uh, I was just about to mention that now. It's uh, all good and well when you uh, pull away with the, with the tries, but when those tight camps come, you need that kicker to be under pressure and take the BMT and slot them for you. Yeah, I think that's exactly the discussion that's been had behind the scenes. Makabane with a big box kick. There's Kosano on the chase. Oh, well taken there by the right wing. So yeah, yeah, came back nasty there. Lucky he slipped the tackle. The other side, just uh, the hands letting him down a bit there. Oh, there might be a good option there by the Grave, grave Boys. Oh, great kick there by Marburg. Good chase there by Callahan. And he managed to get away from it. Oh. Away from two tackles. To stretch over for the try in the corner. I think mean, he can't believe it himself. It was no, a bit I of a comedy yeah, of errors got, there. I uh, surprised there when he just saw how close he was to the try line. I mean, he is a tall lad with long arms and long legs, and he just stretched over and managed Made to get a five-pointer. Made good use of those limbs of his. But I think Muir will be disappointed with the defence there. They, they should have definitely tidied that one up and exited. Uh, but good chase from the Grey Boys. Myberg with a kick through. No, they, show, they had some good pressure on the, gray, on the Muir Boys. I think they, maybe that was the mistake. Didn't realise that the pressure was coming. One of the tougher kicks here today in the corner. Callahan will try and slot it. Well, Callahan, when he kicked his first kick, had more than enough uh, distance on it. Yeah, he'll try and start this one off at the uh, the left upright and let the wind just pull it back. Strike. And uh, you call that one, started there on the left upright. Yeah, oh, fantastic draw. The golfers love that one. A little draw off the tee. Uh, it will definitely help the young man's confidence in his kicking game. I think they just need a bit more consistency. And that was lovely to see. Number 10, Kilani. Nice big hanging kick again. Fantastic drop kick of the ball. Skosano looking to tidy up. Dancing feet there on the left wing. Now oh, Gray set up for an exit. Makabane practicing his box kicking here today. Nice oh, big high hanging kick. And Maya Prince with the chase. Knocked on there by the right wing. And straight to touch and uh, referee's going to come back for a knock on scrum down. Well, unfortunately, uh, so Yaya is actually a, a cricket player so he should have taken that. Big problem squad coming on the field here. Yeah. The coaches are looking to give their whole bench a run today. Young Adam Holmbo coming on at, uh, at fullback. De Villiers on the wing. And uh, the forwards there, Mushka, Ferreira, Nordea up front. Full change up front. And then Del Robertson and Wilkinson. Making out the rest of the subs that have come on. Another big scrum there from Gray. Little prop from Wilkinson. There for Smith Strong in the tackle. Good carry being held up. Muir looking for a turnover there. Wilkinson out to Tanner Howard with the carry. Oh, he did that contact zone well. Looking for kick ball here, Wilkinson. Popping out to Smith. Short one to Callahan. Oh, Ferreira. Just wasn't in the slot, that pass. And a 
big man. He'll be disappointed himself. He's got some slinky skills himself. Rates himself as a, as a pole kicker. I think may, maybe sitting out there in the cold, he's a bit stiff, so off the mark is a bit slow. Yeah, he, he'll have a word to Callahan there. He said that pass just wasn't good enough. <laughs> he won't take responsibility for that. See another substitution going off there. Hobson's been replaced. While there's an injury on the field, looks like the young German Bizio's injured shoulder. And they're going to be looking to sub him. He's had a, he's had a great game today. So busy has kept the, the Muir defence busy. There with the grey biokineticist uh, Andre van Zijl. He does a great job getting these boys conditioned and ready for the season. Helping with injuries and, and prep and conditioning. Feeding them all the uh, future life that they need. There's no mistake from Gray. Scrum down, Muir ball. Clomelo Dungani with the feed. Another big scrum from Gray High School. Uh, referee looking for a reset. And I think those replacements that came up for Gray are really doing a good job. Putting a lot of pressure on the, the tied Muir forwards now. Yeah, there's some real mongrel amongst that front row now with uh, Mushka and uh, Nordia coming on. And Ferreira definitely adding about 130 kgs there at uh, Lucet Prop. So calling a reset, Mio looking at the options. They've set nice and deep, looking for a backline move. Oh, referee not happy with the early shot from Gray. Free kick for Muir. A little tap and go from the number nine. Please, Jude Mayer got across that varnish line there for the Muir boys for once. Good hands there. Yeah, well collected there by De Villiers. Unfortunately, mistake from uh, Muir gifting possession to Gray High School. And Wilkinson looking to box kick. Fantastic kick just into the 22. She's chasing Adam Hombo. Adam getting shrugged off by the, the big winger. Now Mio looking to exit. Yeah, it's a good kick. Safely into touch. Taking play just to about the Muir 10 meter. Nice contingent of Muir boys out today cheering on their team. It's good to see the, the boys out there and actually supporting uh, supporting each other. And I think that's what schoolboy rugby is all about, coming out here on the Saturday morning or the afternoon and supporting your teammates. I mean, what else would they be doing? Probably spending time on their phones or their iPads. I mean, couldn't think of anything worse, really. No, yeah. far better being out here than sitting indoors and Correct. watching a little <laughs> screen the whole time. Gray looking to control this line out more. Just trying to get it reset. It's just losing its structure there. Good fight from the Muir boys. Uh, far better defense there against them all for Muir. Good run there. Looks like it's from Myberg. Just taking it back into the traffic. Oh, referee not happy with something that happened earlier. No, I see he's uh, blowing that whistle quite loudly, so definitely not happy about something. He blew about five or six times there, which is normally some sort of yellow card of some sort. But um, just having a chat to the captain. I think it might be a side entry from the mall there that the ref called. Yeah, good penalty kick taking play deep inside the 22 of Muir. Gray High in a very good tacking uh, position here. Our money on some sort of uh, line out more. I think I'll put my hundred rand on that one. If uh, the Grey Boys have been mourning like they did in the first half, they'll definitely sack it up now in the second half. Oh, just over the back there. Looks like it was Ben Vessels who's doing the throwing in now that Hobson's off the field. Unfortunately, he missed his jumper. Muir looking to exit. Kicking into the midfield. That's high risk. Mayor Prince who went high, unfortunately missed it. 
Referee says knock on. Uh, he's playing a bit of advantage there to the Mule guys, see if they can uh, do something with the ball in hand now. And Janssen just cutting back inside, came a bit too close to the trams. That rush defence again from Grey High School, just pinning Muir back in the own 22. And referee, uh, yeah, he called that correctly. It wasn't much advantage given there, so they'll come back for the, the scrum for Muir's put in. I think Gray's done really well on, on defence. They're rushing up and closing down the space, not giving the Muir boys any, any space to run to the ball. They're keeping us on our back foot. Yeah, they've, they've definitely stayed connected very well between the fly and the centres and the, and, the, and, the, and the wings as well. And just putting uh, Muir under immense pressure. Uh, Gray has come again as solid as always. Thank goodness for that 1.5 meter rule. Oh, a little cross kick just going into De Villiers' hands. He's looking to reset that. As the big heavies get back into position. Trying to carry the ball up. Can't quite see who that is there. It might be Tanner Howard or Hobson. Oh, to Zephyr Smith. Popping to CJ Nordia. Fletcher Briss is going to set it up out wide here. Wilkinson out to Mushka. Getting into the back line. Smith. Davidia is looking to try and take the ball up in the midfield there. Just a bit of a, a knock on there by the Grey boys. I think they're a bit uh, in a hurry to to force the play instead of just maybe being a little bit more patient and setting up their, their pods again. Yeah, luckily that rain has abated a bit and should give us another 20 odd minutes of good schoolboy rugby here at Muir College. Decent crowd out here today to support their boys. And lots of people came through for Paul Elizabeth. Now known as Kabecha. Oh, it is nice to see so many parents out here. Even though with uh, the rain coming, they stuck it out and supporting the lads. Muir yeah, still trying to exit their half into the stiff breeze there for Smith. Onto Holmbo. Holmbo using his gas and going out wide, just a pass not going to hand. Gray just trying to reset that and slow things down. Tanner Howard with the run, unfortunately losing that in the tackle. Oh, he won't be happy with that. He also has high standards and uh, just getting a bit messy at the moment. I think Gray's going to be careful not to allow the game to break up too much. I know the coaches want to take them through all their, their set plays. I think maybe with the, the bomb spot coming on, as they call it nowadays, this, the replacements, that uh, the boys were a bit cold sitting out there for the whole first half. So they're still stiff. They weren't warming up uh, during the, the halftime break or before. So maybe now they're just uh, not used to the, the cold weather. Yeah, definitely the first taste of winter this weekend. We're happy with that because that means rugby, lots of it. Definitely. Nothing better than a Saturday morning sitting out uh, on the side of the rugby field and, and, and watching the boys play. But what talk about watching play, I see the, the, the Muir coach, but I've said pacing up and down the, the side of the field there. Oh, Muir doing a nice deep move here, ball going to hand. And this last minute. Injury there, and Mayor Prince who just saying hello to him. Just saying hi to uh, uh, little Mbali on the, on the left wing there. I think that's also uh, one big feather in Grace cap is how silky the hands have been during the course of the day, and uh, unfortunately, the Muir boys' hands just let them down quite often. Yeah, unfortunately, just trying to force the play at this stage, and uh, one mistake can cost you. 
unfortunately, Young and Bali could not hold on to that as he was driven into touch by Mayor Prince Lu. As Ben Vessels with the throw. Yeah, again, all that messy at line out time there. I think if that ball went to hand, uh, the Prince Lu on the right wing there would have definitely been in for a five pointer. Yeah, Muir under immense pressure at the moment. They just cannot exit from their 22. Obviously, the stiff breeze that's in their faces. And obviously, the, uh, the stiff defence that's keeping them at bay. I think Muir got, Muir's a double-header there with the defence and the, and the breeze. But oh. uh, someone just broke the line and still going. You know, as we spoke about defence, cut straight through it there, like a hot knife through butter. But now a quick turnover and a big turnover, pop. a lot of space out there on the left-hand side, and uh, ball, uh, ball won the race. Yeah, unfortunately for young Hombo, he called it, he saw the space out there, and a little chip over the top. Uh, ball just ran through into the dead ball area, and they'll come back for a scrum. Line out, uh, ref called a 22 dropout. Now, see, so he's giving options. He's going to go back for a, a scrum down where the kick was made. Players looking as confused as I was. Well, thank goodness for, for one great mistake. Mio got out the half. Let's hopefully they can capitalize from this now. Yeah, there was a great break. Looked like it was the outside center, Hote. And he had a fantastic run. Slinky skills, stepping on the left and right. And then got held up. Just didn't have the support to keep with him. And that allowed Gray to do the turnover and put the ball deep back into the half. And here we have a big scrum. Pretty much on the halfway line in, in front of the, the Muir crowd, the Muir boys. Ref not happy with that. The Muir not taking the hit. It'll be a short time for Grey High School. Wilkinson looking for the quick tap, but uh, Captain just saying, hang on, let's slow things down. Let's get into position. You often see this in sevens rugby where the, the teams get set up properly, knowing what play they want to take on. CJ Nordia, big run into contact. for little Gary Owen. Big high up and under. Mayor Prince who under it. Not quite getting there. Picked up well by Fletcher Britz. As we float off the ground to, to Mayberg. Well done by young Brad My Mayberg. And out to uh, the big lock forward, Blayton Ward. Very strong on his feet. Gray needs to quickly recycle this. Pretty much right on the line. And a big dive straight over for uh, another five pointer today. Looks like it was the, the big prop forward, Mushka, Evan Mushka. That close to the line, you're not going to stop the big man. I think when the big boys uh, are so close to the to the whitewash, they can sniff it. There's not much stopping them. Yeah, they'll be happy with that. Forwards been working hard today. Lots of support, getting numbers at the breakdown. No, we can see the forwards are working hard. At least their jerseys are dirty. It's those uh, lads out in the back. They're still clean. You can still see their numbers. Yeah, they better go roll in the mud before the end of the game, so they don't get ragged by their mates when they get back to hostel tonight or back to school. I think they might need to do that. Another good conversion there from Carl Callahan. Really finding his mojo there with his left boot. Score now 48 points to zero on the board. 
I think accurately it's actually 45, it's 45 points to zero. With about 13 minutes of play left. See the mule fours are just slowing it down a bit. Oh, it's a great kick off there. Well, well collected by the Muir boys. Unfortunately, knocked on in the tackle. Luke de Villiers taking it up there with a strong leg drive. Wilkinson trying looking for his forwards. Out to Ferreira. Uh, Ferreira's got a quite a large lad from on top here, so I can't imagine uh, how big he's up close. Howard slinky hands. Out to Marburg. Oh, unfortunately, Carl Callan just knocked on. The referee not showing advantage. But Mio have all rights to this. A big counter right there from Gray. It's going to be a bit messy at breakdown. Any man's ball. Fletcher Bits, Mayor Princely with the run. Another nice hard run from the right wing. Oh. Great steal from Muir there, under huge pressure. The young man sacrificed himself, got his hands over the ball. And Still the lock boy, got stuck in nasty there. Not one of the, the flashiest players, but at least he's done the hard graft during the, the course of the game. Yeah, and unfortunately not finding his penalty, his touch. And Gray looking to run this ball out to the left wing. Deep chip over the back, the wind just pushing that ball near the, uh, the try line. Oh, just happens to run into the the dead ball area and they'll come back for a should be a scrum down from where the ball was kicked I think the ref's just trying to get an idea from the um, the linesman and he's decided on a 22 this time which is a bit different to the earlier call correct I also thought it would have been a scrum further back from the kick <laughs> nice low drop off drop off there Del Robertson with the charge. Oh, straight through the first attempt to tackle. Gray not pretty many guys at this ruck. Out to Ferreira. Out the back to Smith. Myberg to ground. Just looking to slow it up. Wilkinson out to the big man again. Ferreira. Got some lovely hands, the big man. No, he's got some good, uh, good hands there for such a big lad. Tanner Howard again, workhorse today. Wilkinson, Atumushka, Zephyr Smith. Luke de Villiers is cutting in there, just running, running out of space. Great looking for some quicker recycled ball here. Oh, silky hands there again from Ferreira. And then a couple of errors running out of players there. Wants to go down the left hand side. Oh, Zephyr Smith stagged. Or rather stragged quite heavily by the Murats. Massive hit there from the Muir boys. Still up for the fight here today. I think the ref, uh, that big hit there, the ref called a bit of a hard tackle there. Uh, just be, be careful with the, the new, as you mentioned earlier, the new can't uh, tackle laws. Smith with a little grubber. Oh, just couldn't collect it there from Callahan. And Muir looking to counter. Looking at the wide left channel here. Oh, some good, good D there again from Mayor Pinsu. And he intercepts. Wilkinson back out to Howard. Knocked it backwards. Ref says play on. Well collected by Dale Robertson. Gray's looking to control things now. Not to panic again. Oh, to Zephyr Smith. Still a couple of crunching tackles going in. I think with this cold weather and the boys are going to be uh, feeling these big hits a bit later on this afternoon. A bit of change of tactic, little cross kick. Looking for Ben Vessels out wide here. Yeah. Unfortunately not collected. The referee says knock on by Muir. Advantage to Gray and... Uh, well, the kick was a good option. We just put a little bit more air on it to get the Grey boys underneath it. Definitely a skill now, the, the, the cross kick that almost every professional side is, is doing was weekly, week in and week out. Yeah, I think Marnie in the book uh, put a new little uh, 
stamp on things with the school for rugby and everyone else trying to do it now as well. Was that ever since last year's World Cup? I think it has been. One of the new laws that I haven't seen a lot of schoolboys playing are the 50-22. I thought maybe Gray would have uh, tried it with a, with a win at the back uh, in the second half. I actually saw it earlier in a couple of the junior games, but uh, not here in the first team game today. As Wilkinson pulls out from the back of the scrum, Marburg with a lovely crash ball. Yeah, Marburg Good. was a bit quiet in the first half, but I see now he's coming into the game nicely. A lovely run there from Tanner Howard. Wilkinson looking for this ball at the back of the ruck. And just unfortunately knocked it on. An accidental knock on, and it'll be a scrum down. I think maybe there's a mere hand inside there, just slowed it down a bit. That's clever. But it'll be a, a short term reprieve for the, the Murats as they look to try and exit their, their 22 with about seven minutes left on the clock. First in front row there are Ferreira, Nordia and Wishka. Another massive scrum. Oh, well picked up there by the eight. By Jude Mayer, the eight. Del Robertson trying to tidy up for the Grey Boys. Wilkinson looking for the pod. Wishka took the heat well there and uh, managed to recycle. Oh, to Ferreira. Unfortunately, just stripped in the tackle there. Another ref. Yeah, you did see it. It's going to be a scrum down to, to Muir again, about five yards out. Under immense pressure as they look to exit their, their lines. Grace put in. Another big scrum out to Wilkinson. Looking for Zephyr Smith for the short ball to uh, Hombo. Our referee not happy with the guys falling through the, the ruck there. So quick the run with a quick tap there. Well, unfortunately, Kuran uh, trying to force that pass, not finding his target, and uh, Gray capitalizing again from all those mismatched passes that the uh, was just throwing around at the moment. Game definitely breaking up a bit. Howard to the floor, Dill Robertson. Wilkinson again looking for quick ball, but uh, the referee said falling over again. I'm sure that's falling over, those hands in the ruck, not too sure. These silly little errors towards the end of the game are going to cost Gray. I know they'd love to put some more points on the board and try and run through the phases. A couple of silly errors around the back of the scrum, back of the ruck, which they need to tidy up. Uh, thankfully, uh, for the Muir supporters, that uh, the Grey are making a couple of errors. Otherwise, the scoreline would have just been a little bit more. They are looking far, far better than the Muir boys with ball in hand. Yeah, it's been quite a power play here today. Definitely the forwards, I think, were told just to go straight. Nothing out wide until you, uh, until you had uh, all, all respect to, to do that. But it was all for the forwards now that, as they still come forward with Dill Robertson. Now the great forwards have really done their part today and had a good game. And that was Vessels again, out to Ward. We'll pop past to Ferreira, looking for the offload. Greg Dill Robertson, great little breakthrough there from Greg Dill. Oh, jumping through the tackle and dotting down just next to the right upright. Greg Dill Robertson. A good individual try there. Had a lot of work to done. At least, what, three, four defenders he beat. Yeah, he's earning himself another first team cap, the young man, another one of the great 11 boys who's come through the system. can play anywhere in the loose forwards.
think uh, Callahan's got uh, all his kicks over so far. So he's uh, really maybe a prospect to, to look at going forward against those big games and uh, when it's pretty tight. Yeah, another good strike from Carl Callahan. Getting his left foot working today, which takes the score to 52 points to 2 0. Gray High sitting at 52 and uh, New York College at 0. I'm sure they would love to get some points on the board in the last two minutes of the game, yeah. No doubt about that. Uh, it's not uh, always enjoyable when you walk off the field and you haven't put any points on the board, even if it's just a penalty. Good carry there from Dill Robinson again. Gray looking to exit rather than run it. Oh, nice quick hands through there. Out well, to Mayor Prince. That worked quite well. Mayor Prince, who some beautiful lines he's running today. Looking for the last pass. Oh, just couldn't get away to young De Villiers. That would have been a very special five pointer. Oh, they're getting a bit messy now in the corner, unfortunately. Oh, no, these boys. It was a bit of a late tackle there, but uh, no need to uh, get involved in this stuff. The Grey boys know to be disciplined, to pull away from any of this stuff. I think that must become a standard schoolboy thing. Oh, it's a bit of frustration kicking in towards the end of the game. I think the Muir boys are a bit frustrated, especially not having any points on the board. But it's been a great... Great game of schoolboy rugby. You, know, you have stayed in it. There's been some massive hits towards the end of the game. They've had a never say die attitude, although the scoreboard would, would tell you otherwise. But it's been a hard fight. And uh, even though Gray has come away with a, with a win this, this afternoon, I think Muir would learn a lot from this game and, and enough to take into the, 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 the season ahead. No, definitely a lot of learning points coming out of today's game. And of course, uh, big ups to the, the Gray Fours. They really worked hard, as you mentioned earlier. The, the systems have been put in place, that the forwards do the work and uh, earn that respect to go wide and Gray really worked hard with their forwards. And now they tried it, of course, just that last pass didn't go to hand, but it would have been a good try if it did. Now, as we tick down to the last few seconds of the game, I should thank the Murats for their hosting today. It's been great being in this wonderful city. Muir still look to run the ball. Great enterprise from the young men. Keeping the ball alive. Looking for a bit of an exit and a bit of a chase down. Adam Hombo is well collected at 15. Oh, great little chicken wing there to uh, Mayor Prinsloo again. He gets the, uh, the pass away to Carl Kellen who slips the tackle. And he goes under the sticks for about his third try today. Definitely been the, the star of the show, young Callahan, and uh, I'm sure he'll pop this kick over. He's doing a little drop kick, which he now slices and misses his last kick of the day. No, but, uh, he should have maybe just uh, taken some time there, and uh, would have been far better to end up with uh, his tally of uh, conversions with a five out of five. And Final score today, 57 to Grey High School to Muir College's zero. It's been a, a great day out, a cold day here in uh, Utenaig. And uh, I'd like to thank the Murais for hosting us once again. And we look forward to our encounter in 2025. Well, hopefully we invite it back that side. Allowed to cross the chatty. Thank you very much. Listen, I must maybe come and, come and sit more with you.